Have you encountered bottlenecking issue? Wait. Marami pa rin nagtatanong sa bench, uh, ano, sa budget kokak bench PC. Sikat na sikat si bench PC. Asa <laughs> ba si, asa ba si bench? Si Kuya Bench. Kuya Bench, ang sikat na sikat ng PC mo. Ang dami nagtatanong, oh. Nice PC build, Sir Alex. Have you encountered bottlenecking issue? Mateo Malti, what's up? Kambal ng editor ko. Wow! Dapat si B-Boy na lang. Saan ba si B-Boy? Lol. Okay, may tanong ako. Here's a... Here's a... Box fan. Okay, wala akong pakinan dyan. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's still early. We have uh, about 15 minutes to go before the show starts officially. Uh, Sultan Mahmud, what's up? I have a question because there's something, there's an issue with Facebook groups now that I am getting triggered. I'm getting triggered by. Um, I will show you. So, oh, let's go full screen. Look at it. What? Okay. What's up, Wizdeck? Ano nangyari? What happened to our Facebook group uh, image? Facebook broke our Facebook group image. It should look like this. I made that. We made that group. We made that group photo to look like this. Me A1 is getting good kung kung may EIS na update pray ko na lang. Yeah, I hope it uh, does have uh, electronic image stabilization. I know what you mean, bruh. I know what you mean, bruh. <laughs> that's my that's my 2018. That's my 2018 um wait, I think we're peeking on on the on the microphone. I'll just I'll just lower the volume of the microphone a little bit here. I'll make it 90. So I don't blow up your blow up your speakers. Uh, JC Oriasor, what is up, dudes? What is up, dudes? I'm very sleepy right now, but I'm trying to be very pro, very. Uh, 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 <laughs> I got my I got my uh, lead clock fan on. By the way, okay. <laughs> A lot of people have. Oh no, no, that's what we should be giving away. Sa ano sa koko community awards? Oh, oh god! I know. I, I finally figured out our raffle prices. Carlos Ores, what is up, dude? What what up, dude? What is going on with our graphics here? With our community gra community image, what is going? What? Uh, why did? Why did Facebook broke in this? Si Kuya Nico na lang nakikita dito. Wala na yung Super Saiyan Jam and uh, no. <laughs> Facebook broke in our in Facebook image. Welcome to the show everybody. We have 10 minutes to go before we officially start. Uh, I'm slightly more awake now. I'm going to turn on my you can't see it. Um, napansin ko kaya kanina yung picture. Yeah, what is going on with our... Uh, uh, anyway, let's forget about that for now. Let's... Um, let's uh, set up our episode for today. I forgot, to I forgot to put in the topic list. Because I wanted to take it out of my mind. Siguro, gusto ko siyang kalimutan na. Gusto ko makalimutan. Parang ano yun eh. Parang... Parang uh, yung por parang forever. Walang walang bi walang bitcoins. <laughs> walang nice ash. Walang forever si nice ash. Uh, so dapat yung actual number one topic natin dapat for today would have been the the nice hash hack. Um, <clears throat> and uh, well, I know not a lot of you guys are miners, right? But Bitcoin is 
Whoo, ridiculous right now. Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. Let me, let's... Uh, not nice hash. Coinbase. Uh, let's... Whoo, okay, Bitcoin is slightly going down now. Thank God. I mean, uh... Thank God or not thank God, I don't know. It's still $15,000 per Bitcoin. A 16000 around there. Um, it's getting, you know, slightly... Slightly returning to a little bit more normal, I guess. Kampan si ko ani umokay na din yung sale ng Lazada may mga Xiaomi phones discount. Right, so we should. Oh yeah, we should talk about that. I think, I think I have a list of uh, of the stuff that will be on Sailorino. So let's see. Oh, what, what happened in my phone text summit? I did not attend. I've I've been I've been uh I've been staying at home. I didn't want to leave the house recently. <laughs> I'm a hikikomori now. Um, damn it! Anong kanao tignan? Hellotronics. Uh, there we go. Hey, open with Google Sheets, please. Hi, a sad story yung nagsabi na hindi pwede 32 minutes. <laughs> Kasi yung mabasa yun. But, uh, alam mo bang, that's like, okay, so, literally, I think that's the third time I heard the thing about uh, the store seller, the salesperson, telling the buyer that the motherboard does not support 64-bit OS. Um, in, in separate occasions, I think the first two occasions that I saw it, it was on a Facebook group uh, and somebody was actually saying, asking other people, you know, yung mga parang, hey, kung ako ya, totoo ba na, uh, what's up, Antonio Arias? Uh, what's up, mga ko ya, totoo, totoo ba na certain mother, uh, motherboard, only 32-bit OS and something like that? That's, the, I, I'm pretty sure I, I saw at least two posts na ganun sa mga, uh, some uh, other groups, right? Um, um, and then this is the first time I got it on on a YouTube comment. And uh, antagal magload nitong Google Sheets. What is going on there? It's a Google Sheet. It's a piece of Google Sheet. Um, and then I ako booking masado, but I'll 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 show it. I'll show. Let's see. Let's go to BTS 1080p. There we go. That's the scene. Oh wow! Such professional layout stuffs the ating BTS today, huh? Uh, Snapdragon 845 is on It's interesting, the Snapdragon 845. I understand that you want to put it in there. Um, I think it's a little too early to talk about it, but maybe we'll, we'll have some time to talk about it today. I don't... Because the thing is, you know, when, when, a, when a processor uh, is announced, it takes... Literally half a year before it's put into devices that we can buy, and uh, honestly, I think uh, at least depends on you know uh, de depending on how the show is going. Because there was a time when BTS as the show, we used to talk about end end consumer consumer end products talaga, as in literally the just just the end consumer product and talking about the experience and talking about the review and talking about the phone uh recently you guys have opened up to a little bit of insider stuff recently uh i think you know it's getting a little the the show has become a little bit more comfortable uh in such a way that in such a way that um let me just control it from here that's perfect, actually. You can still hear the music if I mute it from here, right? Uh, it's, it's sometimes yung, yung audio mix. Uh, streaming audio mix is like a, an entire art form of its own. If you, if you guys ever pick up uh, YouTube streaming or Twitch streaming, mixing audio to, to the right amount is an art form of its own. And it's crazy. Talagang, you will... Literally, would never be an expert at it. <laughs> Literally, uh, even with like three, four, five years of experience, your audio mix will never be perfect. Uh, where was I? I was saying something about. Uh, oh yes, na, lit, uh, recently, yung BTS has become 
more meta, I guess, or more uh, talks about a lot more insider things. And you've started to, the audience, you guys have started to accept a little bit more, uh, in, um, you know, uh, high concept stuff or um, not necessarily things you can buy right here, right now, right? So there are, so it's like talking about VR, talking about things like that, which not necessarily is available to you, but you, you've been interested in discussing it. Regardless if it actually affects your life or not. And I like that because there are a lot of things I can't experience myself. And there are a lot of insider stuff na gusto ko pag Because we are a person that, that is in this industry. Um, because there was a time when you mga audience or you guys or at least most of the audience back then were consumer public, right? Basically people who just want to buy a phone. Uh, recently, nagkaroon ng mix yung ating audience to magiging uh, a little bit more techies, right? So people who are, yung hobby nila is to actually learn and, and figure out and become part of the community of technology. Uh, not experts, but may techies na lang din, or geeks or whatnot. So I, that's what I like. I, the, we're starting to become a more uh, 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 a geeky collective and I like that because I don't want to be just the guy that's just be like, Hey, this is the phone. Here's the price. Here's the specs. Here's what my review. Let, let's talk about technology. It's basically what I really want to, to happen to Big Time Show. And that's slowly becoming a reality for me, for you guys. Hopefully, you're still around <laughs> after a while. Uh, let's see what's going on with the comments. Um, uh, you always connected PC, you Nova Goni Ace. I want to I wanna check that out. It seems like it's way too... Uh, ang problem ko kasi is uh, lang ako, so it's very hard to just go do all the research and everything. And I can do the research for most of the phones and everything, but the problem is when it's like super cutting edge or super weird technology like the Nova Go. I think that's the Snapdragon 42845 and the running Windows 10 because they did they did silently announce Microsoft did. Oh uh, wait, Microsoft? No, in no, not Intel. Uh, definitely not. Microsoft did. S silently announce um, computers that are running Windows 10 with a Snapdragon processor and recently lang yun, I think it was this week when they announced it it was so so hidden off to the side because they it's still ang, ang feeling ko from Microsoft uh, is that it's still so untested this technology with, with running running Windows 10 full Windows 10 applications with a Snapdragon processor that's still untested, they don't really want to, you know, have people complain about certain issues with it. Uh, 30k del dito, you Nova Go, that's pretty affordable. Um, let's see, let's click on Koya Norms' link here. Very, uh, very good, very, uh, uh, page not found. Wait, as is, wait, let's see if, uh, Nova Go convertible notebook check. Let's see that one. There we go. All right, so that's it. Let's actually, you know what? We can discuss that a little bit right now if you want. You know, we have some time. Uh, hey, what's up, Kuya G? And he's uh, obviously Kuya. I'm a load no price list on Hellotronics. That sucks. Let me load that again. <coughs> Hello, Tronics. I don't know who can to sale. I think it's the 12 12 revolution, right? Here's, I mean, you get you get a big. <laughs> let's just no. I can't download. I just want to open it with Google Sheets. Copyright can man Google Sheets. Uh, what's up, Estelita Santelices? What is up, Estelita? Um, so here's the new price list from Hellotronics. This is the 1212 Lazada sale. Let me just read what they said about this. Um, I know that some of this might not be actually allowed to be. Uh, we're excited to share a full list of online revolution 1212 on sale items starting December 7. That is two days ago. If you're affiliated, blah, 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 blah. Okay, okay, okay. So it started December 7 until December 12, 2017. Um, how's the audio mix right now? I think it's uh, maybe a little low. There you go. I know you want. I know you guys want to bop your heads. I've I also considered playing some Christmas music right now, but uh, recently I copyright. 
<laughs> so I don't know. Let, here we go. Let's let's look for some. Oh my God, Helotronics has a lot of products, by the way. They have a ton. They got power banks up the wazoo. They got cases for all their phones up the wazoo, like multiple versions of cases. So this is gonna be like super hard to find a specific thing that everybody is gonna be interested in. Um, let's see. There's a sport camera. This is a uh, what is this? A uh, what is what is little. little can I control click this for just loading the how do you do that in Google Sheets you click the link damn it um, so this is a uh, one of those uh, action cams action cams by the way. I don't know about 4k I don't really I don't think that Whew, well well, buti na lang hindi na uso masyado yung ano ngayon, yung action cams ngayon. Nawala na siya sa v it's it's no longer in vogue especially since GoPro became basically a shit stain. Well, not a shit stain, but became quite unpopular, right? So, hey. <clears throat> Lionel si Rocco, okay naman Christmas songs pag malapit na like next week. Well, next week would be essentially I'm planning next week to be our last episode of the year. Uh, December 16 sounds about right for our last episode of the year, which would be our Big Time Show Awards. Um, and I think if you, we have another show the other week after, uh, Patrick Placido, thank you for the subscribe very much. Um, if we do our, our show on the 23rd, that would be super close to Christmas. I don't want people to be like, you know, disturbing their Christmas season. Uh, celebrations on the 23rd, uh, so close to the 25th, obviously. So, you know, bahalag di date kayo, baka meron kayong Christmas uh, family thing gathering or whatever. So, I don't want to do that. I want to have uh, my plan is to have the last episode of BTS to be, or uh, for 2017, to be next week, which is uh, December 16th. That's gonna, we're gonna talk about all those BTS awards details in a little bit. Uh, at maybe maybe later, right? So, um, ano po masasabi niyo po sa Asus Zenfone 4 Selfie pros and cons? Okay, intro, Asus Zenfone 4 Selfie. Um, I think it's a good phone, but it has, but it is inferior. Uh, Zenfone 4 Selfie, right? I would rather have you buy. Wait, are you talking about the Zenfone Selfie Lite? No, the regular Zenfone Selfie, right? I would rather you buy the the, the regular Zenfone 3. Eh? But then again, it depends on you as if you need the selfie the selfie features there. Eh? Obviously, the Zenfone Selfie has dual front cameras, right? Uh, I'm I'm not I don't like dual front cameras. I just need one front camera and I'm fine, right? So and and that one thing will be sh will, will you'll notice that we'll have that category covered in our BTS awards and that's why I'm excited about BTS awards awards this year even though marami tayong like I've me person as a person as uh, in in this December and November marami hong pinagdaan ng hardships recently uh, uh, outside of outside of blogging or even with blogging the medyo uh the, the would call her my my uh my my day i guess for example in nice hash mining bitcoin thing and whatnot uh it's it's well i know i know my point go <laughs> oh yeah zenfone 3 zoom holy crap that price drop huh right see jc oriasaur is talking about the Zenfone 3 Zoom. We'll talk about oh my god, and dami natin pag usapan to be completely honest. And and that does that makes this show a little jam packed a little bit. And I hope we can cover everything. I hope you can remind me what uh, what kind of stuff we need to talk about here. Uh, previously on BTS, <laughs> you 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 gotta check out our pre our, our BTS. Uh, we had oh wait, <laughs> so last year we had a very very simplified list of awards, really crazily. Because I, I I thought it was getting too complex, you know how you know we're we're having like like six categories, we or I think eight categories or something. We even had like whatever, so some weird weird categories. So I I decided to shorten it this year. I've added some extra categories that would make sense. That would make sense, especially in today's market. 
Uh, ang tatay, nabili, nabili ko tatay ko last Saturday, Sunday, is Zenfone 4 Max 5.5. Uh, hindi ko alam kung sa OnePlus na lang siya. Ayun, tuloy, naging tayo siya mag-charge 3 hours. Yun, that's fine, you know, the, the battery on those phones are big. Honestly, I would have gone with the Zenfone 3 Max. The 5.5 inch Zenfone 3 Max. My problem, okay, so, here's the thing. Gener- generally, all Zen phones, uh, all Zen phones from 4, uh, or at least from 3, all Zen phones from 3, when they moved to Zen phone 4, uh, became super downgraded. Or, hindi naman super downgraded, but it is a downgrade, right? So, let's say the Zen phone 3 Max was, when it turned into the Zen phone 4 Max, it downgraded. Here's Here's why. The Zenfone 3 Max, at least the 5.5 inch, had a full HD display. The Zenfone 4 Max 5.5 inch has a 720p display. What? Where? What happened? The price didn't go lower. It, it actually got higher. The price went higher on the Zenfone 3 and uh, the Zenfone 4 Max, except the the display went lower quality. What? What happened there, dude? I don't understand that. So, overall, for the most part, all the equivalent phones of the Zenfone f- series became lower spec this year. Uh, part of that is because they nila yung bloatware, because bloatware pays for a lot of stuff on that phone. Uh, part of that is because, I don't know, you know, Asus just seems to increase their prices year over year. Just like the Zenfone, the first year in Zenfone, the second series Zenfone increased basically the mobile price. And after that, basically, nagdagdag pa sila ng another 50%, 60% on the price. And now it's just what? Twice the price of the Zenfone 3. Crazy. <laughs> and <laughs> here's the funniest bit. Here's the funniest bit about Zenfone 4. The Zenfone 4, the regular Zenfone 4, there are, there's not even any, it's not even out in the Philippines yet. That's why, that makes it so that the regular Zenfone 4, the standard Zenfone 4, is not eligible for BTS Awards 2017. Unless you can prove to me that you can buy a Zenfone 4 right now at the mall and go to an Asus store. Hey bro, I got 25k, 26k, th- actually it's 28 freaking thousand pesos. You go to a freaking mall right now, go to there. I have 28 freaking thousand pesos. I'm planning on wasting that. Give me a Zenfone 4. They will not give you a Zenfone 4 because it does not exist right now. That's how messed up Asus is right now. At least in the phone, in the phone business, they're doing very good in this in the gaming business, PC gaming business. Um, <laughs> you know, downside is about Zenfone for you. It's para po mapangit tas mahal pa. In Facebook lang naman at Candy Crush lang siya. Yeah, I think you know your 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 dad. If if you know, he wouldn't have uh, a problem with you know a phone like that. It, it honestly, I I pick a lot on I make fun of the Zenfone series a lot, but. They're very, very good. Like they make very the ba- their baseline phones are very, very good in terms of user experience, right? Their their build quality is excellent. Their their support is excellent. They make really good looking phones. Uh, the batteries are great. There's no problems with the software so much. There's just minor issues. And and as a as somebody like me who comes from the side of Price to performance ratios and and uh, other geekery like that and stock Android and whatnot. They're not doing the right thing. But for mainstream consumer, the Zenfone series is absolutely uh, absolutely just very easily recommendable because their software is just tuned very 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 perfectly for for a lot of mainstream users. This is not something like a, a, a Xiaomi MIUI, a major super magarbo like iPhone, and there's not it's just not Meizu or anything. This is bug standard, very very Android, but very very user friendly, and 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 you're almost guaranteed that it won't crash or anything. So that's good. Uh, also, tama lang, uh, at least this table is too hard for how to pick. 
Mal masyado na Zenfone 4 at that price, Nokia and OnePlus, and yeah, exactly. We'll be talking about OnePlus 5D actually later today. Oh my god, this this show is gonna be crazy. Uh, Moto X4, that's also a topic. Uh, I have it on my screen right here, Moto X4. I did not know this was announced. I, I normally have invites from Motorola. Maybe they had... Uh, I don't know what, they, what, what happened, or maybe they silently launched this. But apparently, Motorola X4 is now priced at 20, 20 25k. How much is it? 23,999. Okay, so 24k. Ah, that's a little. Bleh. I'm not super familiar with the comparison of the specs. I'm pretty sure the X4 has very similar specs to the Moto G5 S Plus. But. I, I still need to figure I still need to check that because I'm not too much you know I think here's a, here's the thing right so here's something that I've been looking for in terms of um, improving BTS in a certain way right I've, I've been, obviously I can't pay anybody but I've been looking for a a I wouldn't say I wouldn't call them intern or whatnot that would I want somebody uh, that that could be part of the show that could give me quick yung, yung very up-to-date just a trivia like what's the specs of the Moto X4 what's the price of the Moto X4 versus this one um, you know, I'm kasi it's just putting everything in your head these days. It's so impossible that I can't tell you what the off the top of my head what the specs of the Moto F- F- G5 S right pl- G5 S Plus and compared to X4. But I'm pretty sure in my head, somewhere in the back of my head, I'm pretty sure there's similar spec. Um, I need, s- <laughs> I, w- I, w- I would like somebody who's like, you know, a little bit. Uh, you know, medyo up to date. There's like, oh, Alex, here's the, the um, ito yung bagong release or here's the bagong link. Uh, Kuya Norms does that a little bit on the side, and then I like that because he gives me the link, he gives me the price, he gives me uh, the specs. So that somebody like that uh, to just to just fill me in on the holes that I don't have. But anyway, uh, <laughs> natayo. Uh, bakit kaya nagkakaroon ng na screen burn ng AMOLED ni Selfie Pro after two months? Wait, next, who who got a screen burn on their Selfie Pro? Uh, Zenfone 4 Max, Zenfone 4 Selfie, ang binibentad lang dito dahil alam nila hindi... Well, no, 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 no. So, well, internationally, there's a there's a drought of Zenfone 4s as well. Um, but that being said, there are Zenfone 4s in the wild internationally. But uh, Snap 625, CG5S, you see, see, here's the thing that I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's like Snapdragon 6. 6. Uh, okay, let's, let's, let's go this GSM Marine. Moto G5S Plus. Okay. So the G5S Plus is powered by a Snapdragon 625. Well, there's the difference there. So 625 versus a 630 on the X4. Oh, that's a, that's the main difference there. Okay, okay. Mm, minor difference, minor difference. Um, well, before we do that, let's officially start the show. <laughs> I, don't, I, I really need some uh, music, uh, uh, a soundboard, but I still don't have one. Um, Let's do that, Muna. Let's do that. All right. So, hey, what is up, guys? Alex here from the TranglerClass.com. Welcome to the Big Time Show. It is Saturday, uh, December 9, 2017. And wow, it is 2019 days. Wait, for four, <laughs> 16 days. Wait, how many days? 20, 24. 25 minus 9 16 days before Christmas <laughs> 16 days before Christmas everybody what is up today is the big time show obviously the big time show is a tech discussion of recent smartphones and stuff like that and uh, wow what an interesting week this week um, 
and I'm really, really kind of honestly, to be honest, outside of the show, I'm very sad. Uh, nice hash, the mining, uh, the mining website was hacked, and I was using that uh, mining website. I did recommend that mining website. I know you guys are not miners necessarily. Some maybe I from from the amount of people I've met, Siguro. Um, there's one in 100 people that I talk to is as friends and, and whatnot that are miners and use nice hash. So that one in 100 person that I've reached out and told to use nice hash, I hope your bitcoins are safe. Some of my bitcoins were lost. Uh, a lot of my little nest egg for December. So I'm a little sad this December. Actually, you know, you, you could tweak that a little bit to say I'm a bit uh, more sad depending on how high or low bitcoin is so yeah some of my bitcoins were lost in that hack um it was my own mistake or actually should we start with the bitcoin now uh, god i'll just i'll just go with the five minute bitcoin thing right so um i think okay so when i started mining bitcoin uh it was nobody gave gave a gave a crap about bitcoin uh, there were few people who were like, "Oh, cool! Bitcoin is nice. It's it's it might be the future of uh, our transactions and whatnot." But nobody was like, "Oh my God, Bitcoin is so impressive!" Everybody, including their mom, their their Lola, their 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 whatever, is interested in Bitcoin. Fast forward to today, uh, Bitcoin has exceeded all expectations. Bitcoin has exceeded all expectations, and the problem. When, when Bitcoin becomes so popular, Bitcoin became so popular that the problem is that's when it attracted a lot of uh, hacking. So the, the, it, the, the writing was on the wall uh, for, for a lot of people. Um, and I've, I've been seeing it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, no, I want to say personal issues, so it's it's not. I wouldn't uh, let. I wouldn't try to burden you with any of uh, other issues. Score, but um, b several various issues regarding that. Normally, if I were my normal self, didn't have a lot of things to do, didn't have a lot of errands to run, I would be very careful with my money, um, and I would know that having my money, my Bitcoin, in an online space like NiceHash. Uh, there is a chance because of how escalated the traffic is, how escalated the attention is on Bitcoin, that eventually somebody will want to hack it. And nung umabot siya ng peak time, which is what basically a few days ago, uh, let's say it was Wednesday, uh, December 6th, it was near sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars per Bitcoin. Um, and my my super high estimates was already just end of December tapa ten thousand yung Bitcoin and I was super happy kung ten thousand yung Bitcoin but it went way above that and it's it has a potential to even reach twenty thousand US dollars per one Bitcoin and I did not anticipate the amount of heat basically it's heat eh? it's like having you know an expensive phone. And your expensive phone is showing sa gitna ng wherever, right? So, I, when I started mining bitcoins back in June, July, it I was just using a cheap phone walking around the street. But in December, I was walking around with a gold bullion in my hands, right? So, you need to pay attention because I wasn't paying attention. I lost, uh, I lost a little bit of bitcoin. That is unfortunate. It's okay though. I can recover. No problem. Um, I still don't know what's going to happen. So if you're not familiar with what happened, nice hash a big mining website. Sorry, let's just go full screen here. Uh, not that screen. This one. So nice hash a big mining website that I use, uh, that I have recommended to other people, has been hacked. It ha they, So the hack was not... Um, Anyway, the details are all online. It's it's very hard to explain how it works. Um, but it doesn't matter the details of the hack. The matter, the thing is, you always need to know that wherever there is money, wherever there is big money, wherever there is money that needs that that is getting bigger and bigger, and the attention is getting 
hotter and hotter and hotter. You need to be more secure with your money, and I was not. So you know, you I I made the the necessary normal precautions for a small amount of money online, but I did not make the the necessary precautions for a small amount of money that is exponentially growing. So that was my mistake. Ang um, the the proper idea, the the proper thing to go about this is basically take your money out. On regular um, in in regular uh, in regular intervals, put it in an offline wallet. So there is such a thing as Bitcoin offline wallets, and you just it's like a USB stick. That's your money right there. Nobody can steal it unless they steal your USB stick because there are physical encryption parameters to that money. So that's what I should have done. I should have prepared for that, but I was not prepared prepared because it was still it was growing so fast, so high, so quickly that I was not able to adjust. So the the, the basically your your cheat phone today, your cheat phone back in J- June is now an iPhone X. You're, it's now a gold bullion in 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 late 2017, and I was not prepared to change that and. Uh, a lot of people got uh, hacked as well. Basically, the entire website got hacked. So there's an issue there. Uh, anybody who I told to mine on NiceHash, I really hope uh, you didn't lose a lot of money. Uh, I really hope we'll all recover from this. Uh, the implications here is crazy because it could mean a lot of things for Bitcoin. It could mean a lot of things for people um, making laws for Bitcoin. Um, so much. I don't know. I I'm not gonna discuss that because it's that that thing is. You're we're, this is not a cryptocurrency type of show, right? So we're gonna go back to phones right about now. <laughs> so that's our that's the end of our uh, Bitcoin thing. Uh, I, like I said, it's it's way too much stuff to talk about for you guys. I know you're interested in a lot of phones and a lot of gaming. So let's talk about that now. Uh, let's see here. Fix na ba white line issue ng Zenfone 3 Zoom? Well, how, uh, why, where are you finding all these issues here that I'm seeing? So let me pop out this chat because uh, I want to read it. So let's talk about... Uh, I don't know. Where do we start? Um, let's see... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's, all, let's start with the Zenfone, right? So this is what disappointed me the most. Makani Zenfone... Uh, they didn't even price... Register for update. What the heck is register... What? Huh? What? Huh? You're supposed to... What? Is it not available now that you have to register for update? What the hell? Well, I... Well, I don't... What? Huh? Zenfone... For selfie. My issue with the Zenfone for selfie is that it comes super close to the price of a Zenfone 3. A standard Zenfone 3 and uh, what is the specs on this thing Jesus Christ man so you're getting a way inferior phone we're getting a quad core Snapdragon 430 processor if not yes a Snapdragon 430 processor at 14,000 pesos this is crazy at 13,000 pesos this is crazy and you're getting a, a what display now? Give me, give me. Anybody can get? Can anybody guess what display the Zenfone 4 selfie, which costs 13,000 pesos? It gives you a seven. They don't even tell you, huh? Display 5.5. Oh, okay, it doesn't. It doesn't even tell you the resolution. It's a 720p resolution display. Who thought of this? The original Zenfone selfie had the 1080p display. And the original Zenfone selfie had the 600 series Snapdragon processor. It was the Snapdragon 615, which was kind of a bad thing. But at least we know it's a, we're looking at the mid-range processor originally. The Zenfone 4 selfie was a mid-range phone. Now they made it what? Entry level, but the price is still mid-range. 720p display and Snapdragon 430. This is like the Vivo V whatever thing. 
it's a seven that's a 720p display as well this is a there, it's non, where there is no world today where you should accept a 720p display for 13,000 pesos I don't care how many freaking lenses they put in that thing I don't care if they put four selfie selfie cameras in that thing it don't make sense you can't see 720 you take pictures how many pictures are you gonna take and look at it oh my god this is amazing I'm looking at the 720p display I'm so impressed with my camera right now no it won't you won't be impressed with your camera because you're looking at the 720p display yo yeah well so anyway my point here is what did they do they actually brought down the specs of every single Asus Zenfone unit that they have and they basically match the previous generation Zenfone 3 to the to the to the selfie in price and that makes the Zenfone 3 still the best phone out of all of these even just Zenfone 4s because let's look at the Zenfone 4 which keep in mind is not available in the Philippines right now you can't go up to a store with 28,000 pesos and buy one of these because it's not available because Asus messed up. Look at this. You have to register to be updated to buy one of these things. But thank you. thankfully, they made it a 1080p display. Huh? 28,000 pesos. God dang it. And you're still getting a Snapdragon 600. <laughs> this is like getting triggered all over again for the Asus stuff, I know. <laughs> getting triggered all over again. <laughs> What'd you do? It's not available in the Philippines. It's overpriced. God dang. So, my, <laughs> my point here is get a Zenfone 3. Because uh, it, it should still be available in some, in some markets, in some stores. You can get a Zenfone 3, a regular... Look at this thing! You can even... Okay, okay, okay. So here's the... I don't like the Zenfone 3 zoom, but look at the price on this. This is the most... This is official too. It's It has warranty and everything. Look at this thing. Huh? You want to buy a Zenfone selfie versus this? Snapdragon 625, 4 gigs of RAM, dual lenses that... Uh, I think it was okay. 5,000 milliampere battery, which uh, it actually works, that's for sure. Uh, I don't know. There's not a lot of downsides to the Zenfone 3 zoom, right? But if I were to choose, I would still choose the Zenfone 3. But at this price point, this is very, very, very good. You get one year warranty too, right? So it's going to get Oreo as well. And, but honestly though, I still prefer the regular Zenfone. This is the regular Zenfone. This is not official Philippine stock though. So this is a 10,000 peso Zenfone 3, 520KL. Um, Snapdragon 625, it look, I think, okay, so design-wise, this is a really ugly piece of crap. Honestly, Zenfone 3 Zoom looks like an ugly piece of crap. Look at this thing. It looks like freaking Wally -E was stuck onto a, a metal surface. It's like Wally -E with a broken tooth. This is not, is that not, does not that, does that not look like Wally -E with a broken tooth? Or in the top left corner there. It looks like Wally -E with a broken tooth. What does this look like? That looks like a freaking uh, amazing looking phone. That's what that is. So I prefer design wise the Zenfone 3 standard. The specs wise this is superior. But it looks like freaking Wally -E got stuck into the corner of a phone. It's just not attractive. There's no shininess. There's no jewelryness to it. And that's the problem of Zenfone 3 Zoom, in my opinion, overall. Overall wise, that's a problem with Zenfone 3 Zoom. But for 13,000 pesos, this is a deal. This is a deal. Um, I didn't fully f 
make up a, a full review of the Zenfone 3 Zoom. I didn't have that much time. They didn't give me that much time to review it. Um, you were hoping for a 1080p 60 stream? I stopped. I turned that off. Kasalanan ng Korea na endorse ngayon ng Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I mean, it's become a trend though. It's become a trend. If you look at uh, Vivo as well, uh, there are just certain brands that are elevating their position uh, price-wise and endorser-wise, but they're not improving uh, the, their smartphones, smartphone specs at all. So, at all. Um, so that, that's what I'm trying to make here. That's the point I'm trying to make. The 2016 phones of, Zen, of Asus are still better. Even the Zenfone 3 uh, Selfie is a better phone to the Zenfone 4 Selfie because the Zenfone... Wait, the Zenfone 3 Selfie? Wait, tama ba? Whatever. Anyway, the equivalent phones. The Zenfone 3 Max, I think, is better. Okay, so the difference here, the Zenfone 4. Okay. Overall, the Zenfone 4 series has an extra lens somewhere. So the Zenfone 4 Selfie has extra lenses to your front, to, to the selfie camera, right? The Zenfone 4 Max has an extra lens to the back. And the Zenfone 4 uh, standard has an extra lens on the back as well, which is a two times zoom the man. So the Zenfone 3 series overall has one lens front and back. So that's the main difference. The Zenfone 4 series, all of the phones have an extra lens either front or back. I don't give a crap about extra lenses, right? I, I just care about one lens and it has to be a very good lens. So that's important to me. One very, very good lens. Don't give me two mediocre lenses. I want one very good one. That's it, right? So I've not been a fan of the dual lens style because that's all been crap because you give me two mediocre lenses instead of one good one. Look. But some people prefer it. Honestly, though, the portrait mode on all phones suck. So don't use the portrait mode. That's not good. It's not a feature worth checking in a box that says, hey, this is a pro. Portrait mode is not a pro. So keep that in mind. Nobody, nobody ever looks out of portrait mode from any smartphone with dual lenses and tells me that looks good. None of those look good. They suck. If you're better off just, just doing your manual blurring. Just doing manual blur. Because that looks better. All right, so NASA selfie generation castle uh, so far in Usun and front cameras. Yeah, I know it's 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 true. Um, and also, you know, <laughs> I don't want to tip our hand, but I'm gonna tip our hand a little bit. So I'm gonna there in in our BTS awards, I'm gonna add the category called this the lifestyle smartphone of the year, right? Or the lifestyle phone of the year because. Uh, it's increasingly become even more evident that we are past the point of uh, borderline uh, acceptable specs, right? All of the phones generally that was launched in 2017 for a certain price point are very acceptable specs. You know, you won't die if you got a Vivo Y69 or something, right? It's still a competent phone that does its job. It can run Facebook, it can run Instagram, it can run a medicum, medicum amount of games. So, by all intents and purposes, you won't get, you won't hit uh, hardware issues like lack of RAM, lack of uh, installable storage, lack of processor power. Lack of GPS, lack of gyroscope, all of those are all in there on most phones at a certain price point. So we, that's not been a problem anymore. And we've gone into a certain weird limbo space in 2017 where specs don't mean anything sometimes. Specs don't mean shit no more. Specs... 25 mega 50 mega let's make a selfie 50 megapixels okay because why not right so specs don't mean anything anymore it's all about sometimes some brands are all making it about the brand sometimes it's all about the marketing now so in 2017 the core competitions of, of phones are are bigger and now they're diversifying into certain segments right so if they're there was a time where we just had to judge a phone by does it do all the things we need to do but now all the phones are check it does all the things we need to do 
it does all the things we need to do. So now the major problem is differentiation with each other via these selfies, via these, you know, fancy things and dual lenses and whatnot. Um, so now that's where I created this category for BTS Awards, which I call lifestyle phone, because now they're targeting a certain lifestyle. They're targeting a certain, you know, <laughs> um, uh, I can't figure, I, I'm trying to f come up with a very nice term, but I, like a, a je ne sais quoi. I don't know what that is, but <laughs> somebody's actually uh, speaking in Arabic. I hope, I hope they can understand us. I don't know if that's just spam or anything. Um, all right, so pinatrayan ng Pixel 2 na kaya ng isa ang offered ng two lens. Jordan De Chavez says, yeah, that's true. You know, the 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 bokeh mode on the uh, um, the Pixel 2 does work. You know, Google has made a bokeh mode from even long time ago. And uh, what you did do for bokeh mode back in then with the Google Camera app was you take a photo and then you move your phone slightly upwards because Google has created the algorithm where it detects the distance of the target by moving uh, when your camera moves upward. So what happens is it knows how far the background is by how much the background moves behind you. So that's when it, de it determines how much blur it gives the background. So very nice. Ask lang po kung may OnePlus 5T na sa Pinas. Yes. Magkakaroon na. Uh, in about a week or so. So don't worry. We already have pricing and information of the OnePlus 5T. It's going to be 26, 27,000 for the 6 gig variant. Actually, I'm going to show you right now. Here it is. Um, so OnePlus 5T. And it's going to be priced at yeah 27,000 for the 6 gig variant. And 31,000 for the 8 gig variant. Those are very, very good prices, by the way. So where was I? Um, uh, I forgot. Where was I? <laughs> I forget. What happened? Uh, dang it! I can't. How do you? Can you speak? Hi. Jesus Christ. Uh, I can't speak to him. I can't. I can't. Can you speak? <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, uh, our fr our friend from uh, Middle East or wherever he came from is speaking in uh, some sort of I think Arabic. Uh, I can't understand him unfortunately. So um, what on the topic nothing. So Zenfone three still a good phone. Zenfone three series still is ser Zenfone three series very promising series still, and Zenfone four really fucked up. <laughs> really fucked. What is going on? This is why I don't get uh, happy invites from Asus these days. <laughs> this, is, this is why the, the, the Asus people are like, oh, Alex. Uh. <laughs> but Asus uh, gaming is, uh, PC gaming is very much thriving. TH thrive, thriving. So, um, what were we talking about? Uh, let's let's move on to another topic. Na lang. So, I, I, I know what we're doing. Uh, do you want to talk about this? This is kind of weird. <laughs> I like I like the color though. Holy shit! Um, I gotta. Yeah, I need an interpreter. Jesus Christ, that's hard. That's tough. Can we limit his chat? He's 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 talk. All right. Anyway, so hopefully you don't get in. Um, you don't get peeved off by our friend from uh, Middle East there. Uh, all right, so let's talk about Nvidia's new graphics card, the most powerful GPU ever created, uh, because it is rocking the new. It is rocking the new architecture called Nvidia Volta. This is the first ever graphics card with the Volta architecture. What is Volta? It's basically, you know, if if you've been compute around gaming computers recently, you've picked up a lot of terms you know um the uh, the amd side they have the uh what is the architecture oh my god uh i forget but anyway on the nvidia side there's pascal pascal architecture oh polaris for for nvidia uh, for amd pascal is old news nvidia has replaced pascal with volta or at least after pascal comes volta so no longer pascal 
This is now Volta, and it's a completely new architecture. I still don't understand any of it. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna figure it out as we go along. We'll see what's going on here. Obviously, the Titan series is not for consumers. These, these are borderline workstation graphics cards. They don't even sell these in uh, custom style. So you won't see an Asus version of the Titan V. You won't find an MSI version of the Titan V. They will always be made by NVIDIA and in this styling alone. There will not be other versions of Titan V. Um, that's generally because this is, like I said, workstation class uh, graphics cards. And they don't sell those to partners like Asus and MSI and whatnot. Anyway. You can see the price is $3,000 because it is a workstation pro uh, GPU and it is super new. The price is really, really high. Let's figure out what the hell it is Volta though. And so it's got, oh my God, 11, 110 teraflops, 3D stacked memory, 21 billion transistors. I do like, so what I'm, I was going to say something about this freaking gold ass, uh, this freaking gold plate thing, whatever. Gold die cast aluminum body. Jesus Christ. 12 gigabytes of HBM2. That's pretty nice. Um, what can you do here? Power supply, 16 phase DR MOS. Um, I'm not going to pretend I know any of these uh, things. <laughs> but uh, at least we know there are some crazy things inside our new graphics, uh, this new graphics card. Deep learning tensor core, 110 teraflops. That's a lot of teraflops. I want to know. The, the difference of the this one let's see uh, Titan V versus X uh, let's see 1080 Ti right uh, so well I guess we'll have a benchmark is there no oh, Titan X put on your benchmark yeah. so let's so this this looks like obviously a crazy but w one thing that is important here is that Volta is around and it should be coming to um well, coming to people very very soon so let's watch this video here It's crazy how much stuff we put into our uh, our graphics cards can get these days. How complex they are now. Like that deep learning technology is crazy because eventually deep learning is gonna be a, a huge thing. You know, I, Google uses a lot of deep learning for their AI uh, systems, right? We we ha still haven't touched. On what we can, what what will happen with deep learning stuff? Uh, let's actually look at, listen to this Volta architecture thing. Predicting the Earth's most severe weather. Finally, finding a cure for cancer. Yeah, that's what deep learning does. And developing more meaningful interactions with technology. These are some of the world's next great challenges, and solving them will require exponential growth in computing power. But the gap between CPU performance and the performance that Moore's Law promises continues to widen. Yeah. There was a need for a new, more powerful approach. GPU accelerated computing. The NVIDIA Volta GPU architecture is the next giant leap forward in computing performance. It employs over 21 billion transistors paired with second generation high bandwidth memory. Volta introduces new tensor cores designed to dramatically accelerate deep learning delivering 125 teraflops of performance in a single GPU. What? With next generation NVIDIA NV Link for direct communication between GPUs, Volta is... Wait, this is 225 teraflops. Holy moly. Jesus. Wait, that can't be right. Unless, you know, it's a different... Worm. Okay, so just in case, just in case you want to... Uh, let's okay. Let's see. Titan. Uh, no, no, no. 1080 Ti teraflops. Uh, whoop, teraflops. So let's see how many teraflops a 1080 Ti makes. 
<laughs> there it is. So, according to this, according to this, a 1080 Ti makes 11.3 teraflops. Now, a 1080 Ti, if you're not uh, if you're not familiar, costs about $800, $700, which is about 40,000 pesos plus. Um, you can maybe get one for less than 40,000 pesos, but generally it's above 40,000 pesos. Uh, $750 or $800. It only makes 11.3 teraflops. Only 11.3 teraflops. You're telling me, if this is correct, this thing is more than 10 times more powerful than a 1080 Ti. Designed in terms of teraflop power. Deep learning, delivering I'm going to go... Uh, on a limb here to say that maybe not 125 teraflops here is not for gaming performance. Performance in a single GPU with next generation NVIDIA NV Link for direct communication between GPUs. Volta is designed for strong scaling to achieve the highest application performance and ultimately save you money. It so here's uh, here's what they're trying to see say here. Three, I mean, they're counting here that if you have three Volta servers or Vol, uh, Volta accelerated servers with the deep learning CPU, whatever GPU, you can replace 480 CPU only servers. It delivers break That's 125 ter uh, teraflops of performance, not for gaming so far. Breakthrough acceleration in over 500 HPC applications and all deep learning frameworks for both training and inference with Tensor RT programmable inference acceleration. Volta powers the world's largest supercomputers. It is also being adopted by all leading cloud service providers and every major data center system manufacturer. This is the one unified computing architecture for HPC and AI, bringing solutions to the world's greatest challenges within reach. Learn more at nvidia.com slash Volta. Right. That's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. I, I, it's crazy to think how powerful that can be for gaming once it is, once it eventually becomes a gaming GPU. And I'm sure, hundred percent sure, somebody will buy this Nvidia Titan V for three thousand dollars and get, tell us how powerful it is for gaming. I'm not gonna be that guy because I don't have three thousand dollars. Like I said, I did lose a little bit of Bitcoin. Sad. <laughs> Um, a little less, a little less happy Christmas for me, um, uh, potentially. Um, but you know, gotta move on, uh, my own mistake for not putting it in a, you know, a secure place. Um, so there you go. Titan V, crazy new graphics card. One thing that is important to note here, at least for in the computer consumer side is how this will affect our, our day to day life or eventually, because in, if Volta is that powerful, imagine what volta gaming gpus will look like in 2018 or 2019 it's gonna be super duper crazy it's gonna be super crazy and uh you can only i mean there's only probably a few reasons why um there's only a few reasons why nvidia would announce this as well they want to you know i don't even know and amd does not have any graphics cards coming up so maybe Volta is just just preempting the the, the race there, uh, but it's crazy. It's crazy. Volta is gonna. It's kind of maybe a big leap in my opinion. So all right. So let's see. Uh, we got some questions here. Oh, actually, I'm, there's a lot of things going on here. I don't even know. Jesus. Uh, shout out my name, Dugu. What's up, dude? Uh, now they show the Titan V. I don't know if it's too late for GTX 1070 to late. Pakaya, magipon ka muna, kuya Lionel Shoko. Um, so just save the money and then buy the best GPU you can buy after you have come up with the money. Right now, since you're still saving money, don't make a decision on what GPU to buy yet because things will change your money will not so if you your money eventually gets saved up in 2018 a certain point in 2018 don't buy a 1070 because uh, because you've decided in 2017 decide on what gp you're gonna buy in 2018 after you get the money so just a little tip there uh 
Uh, is Huawei P10 Lite a good phone? I don't like the P. The I would. I don't like the P10. I don't like the P10. The, the Lite series. If you're gonna get a P10, get a regular standard P10, not the Lite version. Um, but honestly, I would. If you're if you're a little strapped for cash, I would go with the Huawei P9. Still a really good phone. The P9. I think the design is better than the P10. I like it even slightly better. I think it's because of, of its a little bit more, you know, uh, a little bit more digital digital-ish looks compared to the P10. The P10 is more super gaudy, um, shiny metal thing. The P9 is a little bit more, you know, li looks a little bit more like, uh, you know, Johnny Five. The robot. Uh, Shana was just talking English. <laughs> um, uh, everybody, we're not interested. All right, so uh, that's Volta. Uh, interesting new technology from Nvidia. Um, the fact that it's now available in a certain graphics card form means that. Gaming graphics cards from Vol with Volta are, is just around the corner, and that's, you know, gonna put a big dent again in 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 building PCs because now we're gonna talk about new graphics cards all over again. But you know, that's how technology goes. You gotta move on, and you know, my 1080 Ti is over six months old now, and I have to accept the fact that over six months old, that's an old freaking graphics card right there. That thing should be, you know. <laughs> It's basically oldie, an oldie now. Think about if you're still, think about the 1070. The 1070 is more than a year old now, a year and a half old or something. Because it was announced in uh, the middle of 2016. And it's late 2017 now, right? That 1070 is almost two years old. My 1080 Ti, thank God, thank, thank God it's only about, you know, I don't know, eight, seven, seven months old. Um, but that's basically your 1070. The fact that you're still saving up for a 1070 in a few more months, your 1070 will be two years old in terms of product, uh, announcement to end of life. Right. So I, this is like buying a console, you know, it's like, what will you buy a, a PS4 or, you know, or a PS3 when the PS3 is already on the way out, something like that. Obviously, it's slightly different because uh, graphics cards will run all games as long as they still run the same Windows. Uh, thingy thingy, me not a whole PC. Let's see what happened. 2018, I can save to 24k almost two months from January to February. 24k is a good number, but definitely you're probably still looking at the 1070 then. Uh, Salamat po rin sa suggestion dati ni Kuya Alex sa Gamma Pina. That's very nice. Congrats on your P9, dude. Uh, yeah, so P9 is a good phone. Great phone. I like the P9 over the P10. I think the P10 is not... Unless you're getting a P10 Plus, which I think has Quad HD display, I still don't think it's a good enough phone for me to invest that much money on, on how much Huawei is asking for the P10 and the P10 Plus. Uh, I think Huawei is asking a little too much for the specs that they're putting out there. Um, I think the P9 is a good... They, they overpriced the, the P10. The P9 was 22,000 pesos or about 400 plus dollars. And then the P10 suddenly became, what, 500, 500 600 dollars, 30,000 pesos? What, that, what, what made it jump from 22,000 pesos to 30,000, 24,000 pesos to 30,000? It made no sense. That Huawei P9 to P10. They just, okay, now it has a different semi megapixel camera it doesn't matter whatever 20 megapixel br black monochrome who the heck takes fo monochrome photos what come on huawei use your brain there you're just trying to you're trying to make you're trying you're trying to make make this like a thing a uh, uh, way you're 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 banking on this like a thing a little too much huawei 20 megapixel monochrome 20 megapixel one who takes 20 megapixel monochrome who takes monochrome photos not none of the instagrammers even take monochrome photos these days uh uh pilit na lang gamitin core 2 duo 2 gigs ram gt 440 
Uh, Luma na yung GT 1080 masaya kung dyan tatanggapin. <laughs> I know, it's still a very good graphics card. Um, Alright, so uh, let's move on to another topic today. Oh my god, there's still so many topics. I'm pretty sure. Motorola X4, I think we'll just forget it. It was announced. I did, wasn't invited. I don't know why. Eh, that's okay. Thanks for the subscribe, Mr. Yuyuan Ninja Gaming. Yuyuan Ninja Gaming. Thank you for the subscribe. Um, Motorola X4 apparently was announced and priced in the Philippines. It's now available with a Snapdragon 630, a 1080p AMOLED display, uh, and 3000 battery, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's priced at 24,000 pesos. I don't like that price, but then again, I don't like a lot of prices. Uh, I think this is a good entry for Motorola, but it's just not firing on cert. You know, it doesn't have anything that makes me want to go for it, except for the water resistance, right? The dust and water resistance, that's good. But in today's market, you need to have something to stand out from the crowd. And Motorola, with this phone necessarily, does not have that oomph to stand out from the crowd. And I know that's kind of like anti of what I've been saying to other people about certain things. But sometimes you just want to stand out. You just lower your price. Just stand out by lowering your price. And that that is where Motorola has failed here because... The price is 24,000 pesos, which is, that price is just, you usually, you forget, you forget that phone because it's a little too much for your budget there. Uh, even though the specs to performance is decent enough, it's just not enough, you, not enough punch to make you notice it, right? So there you go, a little another forgettable phone from Motorola. I think the Moto G5S Plus is the best as far as launches is concerned, the pricing launch and whatnot is concerned, I think that's the best from Motorola of recent years. 15,000 pesos, very good phone. It does compete with a lot of other phones and specifically the Zenfone 3 as well. And I would side with the Zenfone 3 in this case because it has stabilized 4K video versus the G5S's non-stabilized video. But if given, if you didn't have a choice, Motorola G5S Plus is a very good phone. Honestly, stock Android automatic updates and whatnot is very, very good. Uh, Major upper price ng ibang units this 2017. May mga rumors pang na 40 megapixel na like. Jesus Christ, mga kuchis ko naman. Oh, God. This, and and, and what, is it monochrome 40 megapixels? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> God damn! <laughs> they just couldn't think of anything else you know, these days. Huh? That's it for the Moto X4. By the way, the price for the OnePlus 3T, OnePlus 5T is on business announced, and we talked about this a little bit early. This is what I would prefer to buy over the Moto X4, um, despite the fact that there, I think the so I prefer the software of the Moto X4. But the OnePlus 5T is still a much, you know, more high-profile phone for the masses, and everybody likes a OnePlus. It, I think you know, just just there are certain downsides to OnePlus OnePlus phones, but overall, for the most part, a OnePlus is a is is a a phone that everybody likes, right? Uh, the 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 critics, you know, Marcus Brown Lee, um, whatever, MK, basically MKBHD and whatnot, uh, even even Linus Tech Tips, I think likes. It is a high profile mainstream. Very affordable, great phone, the OnePlus 5T, over, across the board. Nobody's going to complain. There are some minor issues, and some people will say, okay, um, like, see, I don't know, see, Kuya, uh, Kuya Gian or Kuya, I think it was Kuya Gian, yes, uh, Kuya Mig, sorry, sorry, not Kuya Gian, uh, did not like, do, do not, do, does not like the, the software support that uh, overall that uh, OnePlus does because you know even if even as OnePlus says that it, they will support it software wise they generally don't so there's an issue there but overall across the board people say OnePlus 5T is a great 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 phone and at 27,000 pesos is very 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 good price for what you're getting here 6 inch OLED display even though it's not a 2K display it is a 18 by 9 ratio display. 
Look at the megapixels getting 16 and 20. Jesus Christ. And another 16 front facing. Um, we get dash charge, which is one of the fastest charging things available. Um, and honestly, I, I wouldn't complain at all if I could get a OnePlus 5T. Uh, one thing <clears throat> for my own usage, for my personal usage for content creation, my issue here is that none of the cameras are optically image stabilized. And I, I'm pretty sure OnePlus did say that they have electronic stabilization. I don't believe in electronic stabilization. I, they, they, a lot of brands say they have very good electronic stabilization. I think there's just I, there's things that I don't like about it. It doesn't look professional. It looks watchable, that's for sure. But video that was taken with uh, electronic stabilization just doesn't look professional. When it has uh, optical stabilization, it looks professional. So I need to have professional stabilization in my videos. So I can't have this because it doesn't have professional level stabilization. Anyway, I'm perfectly fine with the phone that I have, which is the HTC 10. Uh, in, case, in case I haven't mentioned that enough. So that is the OnePlus 5T announced in the Philippines. Uh, it's going to be available pretty soon. Pretty sure before the end of December. Pretty sure it's going to be in a week or so before. Basically the, the Christmas rush. This will be available from Digital Walker. Digital Walker is the only uh, seller of OnePlus 5T here with official warranty from Digital Walker themselves. So if you're going to buy one with warranty, you get it from Digital Walker. Priced at 27 and 31k. So that's the OnePlus 5T. No complaints here. If you want one, get one. Get one! Uh, 2K pa OnePlus 5T na eh. <laughs> Dude, I... I uh, ako, well, this is one thing that a lot, a lot everybody knows about me. I have to have that 2K display. I have to have Quad HD because I am a bit of a... Um, I'm a bit of a resolution nut or a bit image quality nut and I gotta have that quad HD. I gotta have me that pixel density um, because uh, honestly I don't understand why we've gone from offering quad HD in even mid-range phones from 2015. 2016 we actually stopped making a lot of quad HD phones and made put them back into the 1080p 1080p space and now in 2017 it like it's like everybody forgot about quad hd these days i don't understand i'm a big proponent i like quad hd i think it's a great resolution for a phone i know for a lot, lot i know for maybe 99 percent of people 1080p is okay but with the money that we pay the my issue with with okay here's my issue with 1080p displays if you're going to offer the same resolution display as last year, make sure the price is lower. If I see a Quad HD in 2015 priced at X amount of money, like let's say 25,000. If I see a Quad HD at 25,000, don't make a phone in 2016, one year later, that is 25,000, that is 1080p. That's a downgrade. You're telling me a 2015 phone is better than a 2016 phone for the same price. And that's basically been happening since 2015. Now we're looking at 720p displays all over again in 2017. So my, my take here is I don't care if the phone is 1080p. You just have to make the phone price lower. Because we've proven that we already have Quad HD displays right now, and it can the uh, Quad HD displays can only go lower in price. Why is it go? Why is Quad HD turning it up in the thirty thousand pesos, forty thousand pesos? Why do we have to pay so much money for the One Plus, uh, not the One Plus, the the Huawei P10 Plus for the Quad HD version? Huawei, thank God they already went with 2K displays, but Jesus Christ, they took a while. Anyway, my point here is, if you're going with the 1080p, make it lower price than Quad HDs. Uh, because I can't understand the point of paying more for less resolution. Uh, let's see. Uh, 7700 HQ, blah, blah, blah. Oh, by the way, the okay, so anybody looking for a budget gaming laptop... Um, the the VX15s are in on really low uh, discounts right now. Uh, let's see here, uh, Acer VX15. 
And there's two variants of the VX15. Uh, there's one that is super affordable at 40,000 pesos. Jesus Christ, this is one affordable laptop right here. Uh, 1080p display, uh, 4 gigs of RAM, a little bit low. Uh, 10, 1050 4 gig graphics card, very good. Uh, and a 7300 HQ i5 processor. So this is, as far as gaming laptops go, this is about as low as you can get. Um, but it's still good. It's got the 1080p display, 40,000 pesos. As far as gaming laptops go, that's the most affordable you can get as well. I don't necessarily like the design. It's very uh, tacky. <laughs> Look at that thing. It's very tacky. But in this package, you do get a one terabyte hard drive, a external hard drive, and an Acer bag. So it's not a bad deal at all uh, for 40,000 pesos. And keep in mind, for 40,000 pesos, you used to be only able to buy non-gaming laptops as regular laptops long that day but now you can buy a gaming laptop for 40k and i'm not gonna complain but if you add 10,000 more pesos to that you can buy a much better version of the same laptop with an i7 7700 hq processor now the difference between the i5 and the 7700 hq processor is that this is more suited for video rendering or video editing so th if you're a video editor this is your choice of laptop or a choice of processor it's also good for game streaming or vid or, or streaming to the internet um, because you have more processing power for processing your game your streams uh, this also has a 1050 ti already so that's a slight upgrade to the graphics card 20 percent faster graphics card here also this has an ssd just not advertise uh, it has an ssd uh, the I think the the 40,000 peso version has a 128 gig, or a th I think this has a 128 gig. I, I forget. The thing is, I think it's still 4 gigs of RAM, which is a little bit of a bummer. That's a little bit low for RAM. Should buy some more and upgrade it immediately. So there you go. It's been pretty decent deals on the Acer VX15. 40,000 pesos for a gaming laptop. 50k for a slightly better one. Worth a look if you're really, really on a budget. Okay, uh, R7 1700. Oh, yung desktop ni Carlo Azores. Uh, 1050 Ti. Defective, 250 gig NVMe. Oh, no. Alright, so that's uh, that's that. Let's move on to something else here. Um, what have we talked about now? So we talked about the nice hash hack. We talked about the... Let's talk, where, Where's my graphics again? Uh, that one. Okay. So we talked about NVIDIA Titan V. Oh yeah, the LG V30. Okay, so that's a nice thing to talk about. People have been waiting for this phone. Uh, ah, God. So it looks like uh, there's some... Looks like LG Philippines is finally ramping up to launch uh, the LG V30+. Plus. Um, okay, let's open this. So, yeah, so this is still from the same... Okay, okay, so I thought uh, Unbox had a different source, but apparently uh, the source is still my source, which is basically Digital Walker. Um, so let's just go... Uh, apparently, all the news about the OnePlus... I thought they would have more, but uh, Digital Walker is the one who broke the news on the OnePlus 5T. Or not, or not the OnePlus 5T. The, uh, the LG V30. I know some people have been waiting for this uh, phone for quite a while. Uh, where is their announcement? Jesus. And uh, well, wait, what? 10 hours coming soon. Okay, December 5. Huh? Wait, it's on a Oh, it's on their Twitter account. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So let's go to Twitter and uh, so Digital Walker. Blah, 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 blah. There we go. Uh, did they delete it? No, they didn't delete it. So. Uh, come on. So Digital Walker, here. Uh, where? Huh? Huh? Did they delete their own post? I think they deleted their own post.
Okay, anyway, I, po I, I posted this the same tweet to Boss Mac, so... Uh, let's, start, let's get Boss Mac here. So, here's the post, eh? Oh, they, they actually deleted it! Oh my god, that's controversial! Controversial! Okay, anyway, I have the post, I have the fit photo here. Jesus, that was annoying. Okay, so, um, based on Digital Walker, apparently this might be a leak from Digital Walker here. Because they've deleted their post. They've deleted all evidence that this uh, thing they've announced is happening. So, uh, as you can see, we now have uh, empirical proof from Digital Walker about the price. And uh, uh, not availability, but pre-order of... The OnePlus, well, not all OnePlus, of so LG V30 Plus. Jesus Christ. So it says here pre order LG V30 now until December 21. So that's what? About uh, 10 plus days? 12 days of pre order time from starting today. Uh, a Digital Walker Mall of Asia or Glorietta and get a free LG 24 inch LED TV worth 10,000 pesos. Uh, down payment of 3000 is required for pre-ordering. Uh, SRP is 46990 so 47000 pesos. That's ridiculously high, man! Available up to 12 months installment, installment with 0% interest. <laughs> I like the available installment for 0%, but 47000 That's crazy! That is crazy. Um, let's go LG... Uh, yes, okay. So, <coughs> I, f I find that super crazy because the LG G6 is only 30,000 pesos. Um, <laughs> they're still selling the G5. The LG G6 is much, it's quite affordable. So, I, I don't know why you would rather want the V10, V30 Plus, or the V30 when you have the G6 plus what okay let's compare okay uh, V10 plus LG V30 plus versus LG uh, V6 plus I mean I guess it's the free TV isn't it <laughs> uh, no 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 add what uh, LG G6 Plus, there we go. All right, so tanggalin natin yung sa. Can we move it over here? I right, never mind. Uh, so, all right, so G6 has a same display. Okay, Snapdragon 835 now on the V30. Same RAM. Megapixel is 16 and 5. If it, it, what? It's not the... Okay. Let's see here. Okay. That's... Oh, God. Just buy a G6 Plus. And then again, you get a TV. If you want the TV, go there, go right ahead. But just get the G6 Plus. You're not going to feel the difference between the Snapdragon 835 and the Snapdragon 821. That's guaranteed. Not going to feel that difference. Also, the, it's crazy that the uh, Digital Walker deleted this announcement too. Uh, let's see. Uh, any links here? No. Uh, norms. Uh, does not exist right now. Uh, maybe it's uh, the the link got garbled. Garbled. What's my TV Plus my generation now? Uh, Digital Walker is bundling the V30. Yeah. All right. Yeah, free TV. Eh. I don't know about this. I don't like this. I never did like LG. I mean, uh, honestly, I like the main G series phones, except for the G5. Um, but this is ridiculous. For forty-seven thousand pesos, <sighs> the pricing, huh? Pricing, talaga, is getting getting crazy, isn't it? All right, so let's. Uh, here's okay. Let's. I. I want. Uh, I. This is something I wanna. So that's that's done. We're we're get, we're done with that. 
Um, so let's close that. Let's close this. Let's close that. Close, close. Okay, let's talk about something local. Um, oh yeah, we, sh we should talk about that Asus thing. Let's talk about something local, which is the Star Mobile Up Selfie. Um, and I don't know much about this. I just want to open it. Uh, there we go. So, uh, the only local phone brand with international quality specifications certified unveiled today. It's smartphone uh, designed to capture all the fun activities of Filipinos' holiday celebrations. The Up Selfie. 13 megapixel dual front facing selfie cameras. This stunning selfie phone will always take crystal clear portrait selfies in widescreen group and only 6990. The dual SIM up selfie uh, runs on super fast 700 megahertz frequency. 3 gigs of RAM. Hey, what? Okay, let's see this. Uh, dual so dual star, star selfie dual camera. So there's a wide angle and there's a uh, normal angle. All right, so let's read this. Uh, what is the specs here? So Bahami links it. Let's actually watch this video. Say cheese. Shiny happy people. And there's a phone in front of your face, out there. Star Mobile is more as exciting. Selfie and groupie phone. Star selfie, 13 plus 13 megapixel dual front camera. So it's showing us it's wide angle selfie and it's normal angle selfie. Um, document your solo travels. Okay. And Barcada trips. gig RAM for multitasking, 16 gig ROM. That's actually not bad. 2,900 milliamp hour battery. It's not bad. Share L photos by LTE or USB OTG. Fingerprint sensor for 7,000 pesos. This doesn't sound bad. 5.2 inch HD screen, split screen, NuGet. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Doesn't show the specs here, but we'll we'll find out soon enough. Uh, up selfie. Well, let's let's check out their website. They should have should have it on their website. This is interesting because we haven't talked about local local smartphones re in in any for, in a while. So uh, uh, smartphones and up series. Your page is loading. Oh no, what is this? What? What? Huh? What? Does uh, the Star Mobile website have ad uh, adware? What? What did I just do? Okay, take a let, let me try and do that again. We were here, Star Mobile PH website. Okay. And, uh. What happened? That's weird. What? Okay. Well, I did to see up selfie. Sad. Uh, Star Mobile blog. Sometimes it shows up there. Let's see if we can find it. There we go. Up selfie. Um, we need the we need the specs. We need the uh, CPU specs. It's loading quite slowly here. Sixty-seven thirty-seven. I see. Thank you, Wiztech. Uh, uh, yeah, this is the Asus Zenbo. They they had an event recently. Um, middle of the year for Asus Zenbo, but it was only in Taiwan. So Zenbo is only available so far in uh, uh, in Taiwan, I think. Uh, so 1.3 gigahertz quad core. It's not bad. It's not bad. The 6737. It's not the most powerful processor in the world, 
But for people who like selfies, this is this seems like a good number here. 13 and 13 megapixel. Uh, 3 gigs of RAM is very, very uh, promising there. I think I like it. I think I like it. Uh, the website is very loading very, very slowly. So that is the Star Mobile of Selfie. Um, If you were to be completely asinine about it, you could say that Redmi, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 4X is still a better decision to buy for 7,000-ish pesos. Um, but, you know what? If you want your selfies, if you're like the Star Mobile, go right ahead. Right? Um, so we were talking about this Hellotronics thing. Jesus, I don't even, I don't know if we can get a uh, look for a deal here. For Infinix Hot 4 for 3799 eh, that's okay. Uh, Infinix 04, Infinix 04, Speaker, Speaker, Speakers, Meizu, Cases, Meizu M3. Uh, anybody want a Meizu M3? Meizu M5, 5999. That's a pretty good discount. I don't really necessarily like the M5. Uh, no. Does anybody want a link for this? Xiaomi Mi 6 has some discounts there, though. Um, anything else? The Mean Note 2? Oh yeah, the Mean Note 2, huh? And nobody's gonna buy that for 20k, Jesus Christ. Uh, E4K action camera. That Now that's something interesting. For the E4K. I'm interested in that, because the Xiaomi Yi shoots very good 4K. No stabilization though, or I think electronic stabilization. All right, let's talk about this Asus Nova Go real quick before we move on to something else. Um, so, uh, CEO of Asus Jerry Shen took the stage at Qualcomm Tech Summit 2017. The Nova Go is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 835. This is also the first notebook that runs for Windows 10 on the ARM CPU, right? Um, actually, think they're not gonna make videos here. Asus Nova Go. Oh, there's a hands on by Engadget. I don't want to get copyrighted though. Let's uh, let's let's watch it briefly. I'm holding what so used to Asus's offer on this on this Windows 10 S platform, which is part of the always connected PCs ecosystem that Microsoft had embedded in its nano flimsy piece of plastic. It's got a full size keyboard, as you can see, with 1.3 millimeters of travel I'm in at least two different configurations with four gigs of RAM and six over time. But the big deal here is the battery life. Asus and Qualcomm are promising up to 22 hours of battery oh, life on the great. Asus Nova Go, which is spectacular. We haven't heard of something like that on a traditional level. So there's the price for the Nova Go. $600. 30,000 pesos for this. Mm. I guess that's okay. Maybe a little pricey for me, but that's okay. Uh, 1080p display. <clears throat> the. I guess the thing that I want to talk about when it comes to this thing is, I need it in a phone factor. I need it. I need. I need Windows 10 running on a Snapdragon 835, not in a laptop. I want it in a portable form factor. I want it in a small, foldable size device that I can put in my pocket. I don't need. A laptop I don't need a snapdragon to replace my laptop processors which already I already have ultra low ultra low uh, I already have a surface pro I don't need another laptop but instead of Intel processors inside it's snapdragon 835 I want a snapdragon 835 phone that runs Windows 10 or a snapdragon 835 you know <coughs> a small tablet I don't want a laptop. You know, I know. Uh, upload kayo sa group yung catalog na. What is catalog? Ah, yung ano yung yung price nung price nung uh, what's it called? So Hellotronics. Uh, I could do that. Yeah. Uh, price. It's a long price list. I should be able to find your link. Okay, let's move on to what is it? Huawei. Jesus Christ, God, I can't keep track. Huawei 2S. <sighs> Alright, this was unveiled. A Huawei 2S 18x9 display, dual front-facing cameras. 
six gigs of RAM, total of four cameras. Jesus Christ. Um, okay, so how much is it? The Nova 2 is the successor to last year's Nova and Nova Plus, and for a price of around 400 US dollars, so it's a lot. Okay, 20,000 pesos. Six inch 1080p plus display. Uh, mm, so there's a front facing home button, that's good, and dual front facing cameras. Uh, two front facing cameras, 20 megapixel main sensor, and 20. Uh, two, 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 two. Uh, how many megapixels is the front facing? Of, so 20 megapixel yung selfie and 22 megapixel backup and also dual cameras is 16 plus 20 mega monochrome one Kirin 964 gigs ram 3340 milliamp hour uh dual sim micro sd card 400 dollars i guess it's not bad it's like the huawei Huawei 2i, except in with a little bit more steroids, right? Not gonna complain. I think the Huawei 2i is not bad as a phone. So this might be a good one. I don't know though. It's just I don't like I said, I'm I'm for the idea that I would prefer a one one single good sensor instead of two mediocre sensors. Now there is I, I did admit that there is merit to the monochrome, the monoch the dual sensor monochrome and color mixing, uh, or composite image taking, but it is in my very firm belief that one sensor is still better than two. One sensor is still better than two. If 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 a monochrome and a color sensor is an actual photography technology that should be implemented or should be followed then why is not why is why are DSLRs still the, still single lens right why is the best cameras in the world still single lens i don't understand why in smartphones there should be two when in in proper high quality cameras there's just one so there's a reason for this to not happen is that my idea here is there's just they're just making a Making a features that should not be there. So you just make one single lens, very good camera. Maybe there is such a thing as that composite help. And then eventually maybe other cameras could have dual lenses as well. And maybe DSLRs will go dual lenses as well later on. But for now, I think one lens is better than two. One good lens is better than two. So let's close that. Uh, uh, can I please get 200 subscribers? Probably. I mean, if you try hard, uh, if you, you upl upload good content, you might get. Uh, Sana maging available sa Pinas yung uh, Huawei 2S. I think it's pretty good. Uh, pretty good. I pretty high possibility it's gonna go to the Philippines. Uh, we were talking about one more thing. Uh, I think it was a. Uh, let's see. What was the link that was given by our friend here? Uh, right, the Castro. Right, Redmi 5X. Uh, Redmi 5. I don't know. Oh, okay, it's in Chinese. Snapdragon 625, really? Wait, so, okay, this is. Can't read Chinese, brah. Alright, so this is a new announcement as well. Put on the the Verge. Uh, Redmi's, uh, Xiaomi's Redmi 5 phones have 18 by 9 displays and start at $120. Now, that's a value. Um, let's see here. Xiaomi showed the first pictures of Redmi 5, Redmi 5S earlier this week. Um, so, here are the list of specs. Snapdragon 450, so that's a low-end processor for the Redmi 5. And the mid-range Snapdragon 625 for the Redmi 5 Plus. They have a 5.7-inch HD... Oh, no! Okay. So HD plus for the Redmi 5 and then full HD plus for the Redmi 5 plus. That sucks. 2 or 3 gigs of RAM for the Redmi 5. 3 or 4 gigs for the Redmi 5 plus. And you can see 3,300, 4,000. Uh, the Redmi 5 starts at $120. Holy shit though. $120 is like 6,000 pesos. That's crazy. And the two, uh, uh, the 5 plus starts at... 
$150? That's like 8,000 pesos. That's crazy. That's crazy. <clears throat> the 4 gig RAM model is 180. So that's more around 10,000 pesos. So in, in Philippine pricing standard format, in case, for example, the electronics brings this to the Philippines, uh, I would say the Redmi 5 would turn out to be around the 7,000 peso mark. Uh, and then 9,000 for the, <coughs> sorry, the the 5 Plus or the higher end version. No, they're not, they're probably not going to sell the 5 Plus here. The, 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 the 4 gig variant. I, I'd say they'd go with the 3 gig variant it's to sell here for around 9,000 and then 7,000 for the Redmi 5. In, in case of realistic pricing here in the Philippines, if Hellotronics gets on this Redmi 5. That's, if, that's promising, but... Uh, honestly, there's there's a lot of impressive phones, and uh, most of them are from Xiaomi as well. So I don't know if I necessarily want the Redmi series. I want the Mi A1 uh, personally, and I think er that should that should be everybody should be looking forward to that one instead. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, my conversion sequoia norms mostly accurate. Then that's for sure. All right, so I think I think we've done our topics for today, and I think we should uh, move on to our uh, one thing that is uh, more, I guess, more relevant to our audience today. Um, we we've we've finished all our topics, right? I think. Alam, I it on problema was it dominating topics sometimes it downloads stock it down downloads topics. All right, so we talked about the 2S, we talked about the Redmi 5, 5 Plus, Titan V, LG V Plus, V30 Plus, Star Mobile Up Selfie. We talked about the Nice Hashtag. We're going to talk about the BTS Awards details. I don't have any sounds or music or for, for that. Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the BTS Awards. Uh, I should have some graphics. I mean, I where is the... Uh, let's open a... Let's open one of our window things here. Let's at least show show you some old old uh, graphics awards here. <laughs> How about 2015? Lol. Okay. Um, should have the. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> you got some old. <laughs> uh, do I have anything? I think I'll just use the 2016 version. Um. Um. <clears throat> All right. VTS Awards details. Yeah, I can't use any of these. So just this. I'm just gonna edit this and just think that the, uh, just just imagine just uh, pretend that this says 2017. So welcome to the uh, announcement of the Big Time Show Awards for 2017. And we do this every year as usual. Everybody knows this, um, and uh, people have been looking forward to seeing how we do our awards this year. And I've me personally, me personally, I've been looking forward to how we're doing it this year because I didn't even know how we were gonna do it until I figured out how we're gonna do it this year. Um, Mateo, do ah, thank you for the subscribe. Thumbs up to you, dude. So this year, uh, it's gonna be similar to last year a little bit. Uh, with a little adjustments and make it a little bit more fun uh, for the whole family. Um, so we're going to have the Coca Community's Choice again voting. We're going to have Coca Community's Choice voting again. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to if I'm going to pick the winners. So, okay. So just in case you don't know, uh, Coca Community's Choice Award is... Uh, let, me, let me open a new... Um, let me uh, have our notes open here so you can see. You can have something to keep track of. So, uh, Coca Community's Choice Award phone. Right? And I'll increase the display of the, the font size so you can read it. Don't worry, I got you covered, bros. Uh, don't worry. I understand you, you uh, BTS viewers want uh, big fonts. Okay, we have Koha Community's Choice Award phone. That's one of our uh, so BTS awards categories, right? So a Koha Community's Choice Award phone uh, will be done with voting by the community, right? Um, any phone sold 
in 2017 is allowed. Right. And uh, winner will be announced. Not yet sure. So I'm thinking either we will announce our winners on the awards night next week. Or we'll announce the winners uh, maybe next year. Because I want... I want a longer time for the Koha Community's Choice Award. Uh, if if we're gonna do the awards by next week, we only have one week of voting, and I think the one week of voting is perfectly fine. Uh, about the Dell laptop, po yung bago nila what happened. You want to watch that video? I uploaded that video. Um, so they they mahal, okay. So my reaction to the the Dell laptop that they announced, I it was a little pricier than I thought it would be. Um, and I was disappointed, honestly. Um, let's watch this. This is in 4K, by the way. Ha -ha! Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, this is in 4K, and this is in H.265, so I need to use Media Player. <laughs> I don't know if ha -ha! my CPU welcome, is going Welcome, welcome like. to another video that so, uh, um, is sort of a vlog I don't like what they did here, because... Yeah, it's pretty thin. It's not one let's go back to the gaming one. All right, so here it is. So, uh, VR game, as you so see. the gaming one uh, the grill on the back is looks, it still looks yeah, very nice, right? It's still the, the great design. Uh, as you can see, the, the previous model actually looks kind of, in my opinion, looks, looks kind of nicer. Here's the previous model. The grill looks like that, and it has a red accent. And then the back, look at that back. That's very nice. The new version is different it looks more star warsy it looks more like uh it, atari it looks more like an atari so the specs for the price is not something i'm very happy with so as you can see right here this is the base model the 7577 with a 1050 ti 7700 hq it only starts with an i7 doesn't have uh an i5 processor like last year but it does have an ips display now very nice 8 gigs of RAM, very nice, and 128 gigabyte SSD, very nice. But the price is 74,000 pesos starting off. 74,000 pesos starting off. And that is not good at all. If you look at an Asus Scar Edition here in the Philippines, which is Philippines? This is where I'm very disappointed on Dell. Um, because if you look at the Asus Scar Edition, this is what? 75,000. Just about slightly more expensive by a few thousand pesos from the Dell laptop. This Asus Scar Edition is way better in specs. So let's see. Scar Edition, uh, 7,700. Wait, actually. Can we actually find out? Uh, where can we find the um, model number or whatever? Vilman? Let's go to Vilman, see if they have it. Alright, so here we go. 77777 price. Asus Strix Scar Edition, absolute precision. So let's look at the specs right now. So just comparing the specs for price. You get a 7700 HQ, same processor, right? It's slightly less powerful graphics card at the regular 1050, not 1050 Ti. But you still get an 8 gig of DDR4, 128 gig SSD, same. Also one terabyte hard drive, same. But oh, it does. Oh, it does. But the 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 the, the, the Scar Edition has a 17 inch 120 hertz uh, panel. Don't worry about the TN because it's it's nice even regardless. Um, so the only thing that I would say that is good about the this one, the Dell one, is it's all, it's 15 inch, it's smaller. So sometimes smaller laptops are more expensive. But look at the 1060 version here; it's ridiculously priced. The 1060 Max U of the 75 7577 is 88,000 pesos for the 1060 Max Q. The only thing that has been changed here is the 1060 Max Q. 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of SSD for basically 15,000 pesos more. That's a bit much in it. 
for nine, almost 90,000 pesos, you're only getting these specs. I, I, I'm a little disappointed. Um, now, if I were to just choose, I'd just get the, uh, the Strix Scar. Because even though it's a 17-inch laptop, it's slightly bigger. You still get a 120 hertz panel. And that's important. That's important for reaction times. Right? Even though you're just getting a 1050. And you can you can buy a lot of other laptops for 75k. I'm disappointed in Dell for launching a pricey f laptop like that. It should have been should have been 60k. Should have been 60k. Uh, dapat yata release in 2017. <laughs> uh, like for like said for me, meron downsides like no. Uh, I mean uh, I mean it started to sell in 2017 is what I mean. The reason why I mentioned that is. The Zenfone 4 was announced and was released in 2017, but it's still not available in the Philippines. The Zenfone 4 Pro as well, still not available in the Philippines. So, uh, I'm, I'm almost inclined to completely disqualify that unless somebody can prove to me that you can buy a Zenfone 4 in the Philippines or a Zenfone 4 Pro. <clears throat> Otherwise, it's not a 2017 phone if you can't buy one. Uh, for the 7567 i5 GTX 1054 gig RAM 5995 parang Acer Helios and price yeah um, well, what's up here James Kasapao so my issue with the 7567 is it did come with a bad 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 display a very low quality TN display and uh, that's one of the reasons why I couldn't suggest it and at this point, I'm I'm almost leaning towards the VX15, even though it's such an ugly laptop. I like the VX15. Hello, friends who are watching this video, please subscribe. Uh, <laughs> get vision. Good luck. Good luck with your uh, your channel. All right. So, call Community's Choice Award phone. All right. Voting by the community only for any phone announced or well, launched in 2017. And. Uh, can be bought. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Kuya, ask ko lang po okay po ba yung Redmi Note 4X? Yes, it is very good. It's a very good phone. Redmi Note 4X is a very good phone. Uh, winner will be announced uh, to be D. TBD, right? To be decided. Um, raffle prizes. To be determined as well. TBD. But here's how raffle prices go, right? So, um, anybody who votes in the Kokak in the KM community KM Choice Award, KM Choice Award, <laughs> what a name, KM Choice Award. That sounds like a Korean music, <laughs> Korean music choice award goes to. Anybody who votes in the Kohak Community Choice Award gets a chance to win a randomly, randomly picked, randomly picked raffle winners in voters at with from voters, right? So as per usual, as since last year, the Kohak Community Choice Award will that we will have. Some raffle prizes. I still haven't figured it out. Go on your raffle prizes, not And like I said, I've been very busy recently. A lot of uh, other things that I had to deal with outside of blogging, inside of blogging, whatever it is. Um, so, randomly pick raffle winners from voters. That's what we're gonna do. Um, I will still. I still haven't figured out what raffle prizes I'm gonna give away. I haven't contacted any brands. Uh, the reason why is generally what I want to do with Call Community Choice Award. Is I shell out the the raffle prices. I usually give away stuff that I own, give away stuff that is brand new that I own. Um, so last year we had like speakers and headphones, and oh yeah, what, wait, okay, I got it, I got it. Hang on, it, give me give me a uh, give me two minutes. I got one prize. I already have a prize. Here's here's one of our prizes. I, I'll get it. You will be able to hear me. So I'm walking over to another room here. I have fi finally found out what I do with this thing. Uh, so I know every I know people like this stuff. 
People are gonna love this. Slightly used. Slightly used by me. Here's one of our raffle prices already. I know. Ha! I'm a genius. Check it out. Uh. Hey, what's up, Peter North? Why did you change your name, dude? Uh, this graphics card is the future. It is the it is the future. Here's one of our raffle prizes. I have decided to give this away for our Koha Community's Choice Award. Like I said, it is slightly used, not by a lot. <laughs> Carlos RSS, maganda read me for X. So here is one of our Koha Community's raffle prizes. I'm not sure if this is gonna be the grand prize yet. We're gonna pick some more stuff. Uh, I'm gonna show you it is there you go so we're gonna one of the, your lucky winners of the Koha Community's Choice raffle view raffle uh, um, voters will get a HyperX Cloud Stinger gaming headphones huh gaming headphones huh this is good I like this I like this one this I reviewed this this is a pretty good gaming headset so that is one of our raffle prizes Hope you like this raffle prize. Uh, I hope you, you're like excited. I don't know if people are excited about this one or not. Hopefully you are. I don't know if you're expecting a little bit higher, but uh, you know, I'll look for other stuff that we can give away. This is ex this, like I said, is coming from my pockets. This is coming from my pockets. Nobody has sponsored BTS awards. I generally don't ask for that stuff because I don't like uh, brands to influence our. Um, awards or brands to you know we uh, like i said we we uh, all bts is all about honesty to our consumers to us because obviously i, I was a con i'm a consumer as well and i want people to be i want the the, ch the channel that i watch to be honest to my to me as well so we're gonna one of these things one of the raffle prizes will be a HyperX cloud stinger gaming headphones i'll figure out what other things we'll give you we'll be giving away um, but that's one of them. I was gonna sell this, but now I'm just gonna give it, uh, uh, sell it, uh, give it away in a raffle prize for our Kohok Community Choice Award. So that's one raffle prize uh, set, fixed already. So we got, we got the HyperX, HyperX Cloud Stinger. All right, there we go. So, like I said, Kohok Community Choice Award phone will be picked by you guys. I won't do it. I will. I, I will put in one vote. I think, but I will count myself out of the out of the 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 winner circle. If I pick myself, I'll pick another person basically. So random person who votes on the Kohok Community Choice Award will win one of the HyperX Cloud Stinger. I'll figure out an, a couple more things to give away, uh, so that people you know they just just feel better about voting. Okay. Um, one follow the master Alex on full time work more. I usually sometimes do uh, web development, but I don't haven't done that in a while. Uh, mostly blogging is my uh, my full time work, and also uh, some family. You know, I, I do I I I work on part of the family business basically. Uh, <laughs> USB led fan, yes. Okay, so Jordan De Chavez says USB led fan. Uh, we, I'll, I will definitely. So okay, so that was one of my plans. But USB LED fans are actually super cheap. But I will still give some away. So don't worry about that. I will have some USB LED fans to give away. Don't worry about that because these things are freaking awesome. Like I'll show you. Okay, I unplug Kusha. It's actually over here, uh, next to my TV. When I when I when I play some games and whatnot, I have the USB LED fan on. Here it is. Oh, yep. Yeah. Unplug. There we go. So there it is, this little baby, bad boy right here. This is amazing. This is amazing. Um, this is a cheap product, by the way. Don't you? <laughs> this is not expensive at all. So this is not a significant giveaway. But I will give away some of these because you guys asked for it. So I will give some. As you can see, it tells you the time and also blows a cool breeze. In your face, so I'll, I'll I'll raffle some of these away as well. Um, so don't worry about that. We'll have that as well. Um, that is the that is the USB LED fan that is super awesome. Okay, 
Um, and we'll, we'll add some more prizes. Um, eventually, more prizes. I'll just type that in. So, like I said... Uh, so, hopefully that makes... Uh, that is a... Uh, <laughs> that is clear enough for you guys that we'll have some... We'll have voting soon. I will announce the voting. Uh, it will be on Facebook. Okay, voting is on Facebook. Is on the Facebook group. BTS community. Right? So, don't worry. You'll find... If you're part of the BTS community, uh, you already are in there. This is the Big Time Show community, as you can see. It is... just. If you want to find it, just type Big Time Show community on the Facebook uh, search bar and you'll stumble upon this wonderful community right here it's called the big time show community just join us and uh, be part of the the voting for koha community's choice so you can possibly win uh, some of these awesome things uh bonds new salazada sa december 12 magsasay lang mi a1 ng 9999 pesos ah huh, that's very nice cherry lobat haha dagdag mo ko ya anong lobat anong cherry lobat what ano meron sa cherry um all right so that's the koha community's choice award that's still not all our categories, obviously. We still have several categories, so we'll have uh, the best budget smartphone. Very, very standard for our BTS awards. Uh, best mid range smartphone. Right? Best flagship smartphone. Right? And we'll also have the uh, smartphone of the year. There we go. Alright, so. Let me just make a digo ako dito. Right. Okay. So we'll also have the uh, minor negative award, which is the Kokok of the year. And I will need your help here before we end the show, right? So could you help me in having our initial list of nominees for all of these before we end the show, right? Kokok of the year. Honestly, Kokok of the year. Last year, Kokok of the year was the Note Seven because it blew up. So, what is the Kokak of the Year this year? I'm going to nominate Asus Zenfone. Sorry, not sorry. Right? Uh, what else Kokak of the Year can you think of? Like, a, you know, gadgets that were f that failed this year, you know? So, Kokak Community Choice will have a bunch of uh, products here. Uh, we could have the uh, Huawei... Uh, Nova 2i, right? So let's let's have some mock nominations right now. You don't have to vote for any of these nominations, as uh, for sure. So the call of the year is Zenfone 4. All right, let's call it the Zenfone 4 then. Um, so possible, and uh, let's let's give it a color. Let's give the nominations a color so we don't have a lot of issues here. So Huawei Nova 2i as a nomination. Um, nice hash hack. That's true. Yeah, Bitcoin. Nice hash hack. That's that's a big one. Um, LG V30. Uh, up na GP. All my GPs are still working. How how is Nokia a Coca of the year? Why they didn't do? They didn't fail. Nokia put out. Actually, okay, so here's the thing. Nokia is going to be one of the nominees for best flagship smartphone with the Nokia 8. Uh, and then uh, iPhone X, maybe, right? Um, smartphone of the year, I still haven't, I still haven't figured out. Uh, Vivo V7 Plus. <laughs> okay. All right. Vivo V7 Plus. <laughs> All right. So best mid-range, I will nominate like phones like the uh, Xiaomi, Redmi. Wait, how? Xiaomi Mi A1 alam. Xiaomi Mi A1. Right. That is a great mid-range. By the way, if you need um. Descriptions for this. This is the budget smartphone is phones under 10k, and then this is phones between 10 uh, to 20k, 
and then flagships are phones above 20k so best budget would be one of them would be the redmi note 4x there you go um so we have we have a lot of i'll just make this bold so we have easier recognition here so if you can help me out fill out these numbers here so we will have an easier time figure out figuring out among ourselves a bts uh, bts editors uh which one will be awarding uh it would help us a lot to narrow down all of the phones this year we, we're not super like oh oppo f5 is i like the oppo f5 for mid-range uh oh yeah, yeah yeah so okay so this is not this is not the end yet right this is not the end of our awards yet so <laughs> we're, we're just getting started right so we have two more awards this year and this is a very good representation of what smartphones have become uh for the most part there's two more um categories and i will put it uh, below smartphone of the year so the next category is best lifestyle phone and then the other category is best geek wait did i call it geek phone best uh, yeah i guess best geek phone uh yes yeah, so very simple and uh, very simple to explain here lifestyle is phones that don't uh um not necessarily high spec but um find a big explanation we explained it really well kanine so <laughs> so chatte uh all right so let's see here <clears throat> so i explained uh the best lifestyle as all right so okay uh the phone is a lifestyle choice first specs or whatever is less concern okay lifestyle choice first less con less important right and then see geek phone is uh bang for buck or uh high specs or nerdy nerdy features all right so uh what i like about this is that we can now add, um how do you say we can now finally sort of address the the gulf that is starting to form between value for money phones and the stuff that we want versus uh phones that are um less value for money but more uh uh targeting the market of not of people who don't care about specs right so uh there are there's some interesting things here for example on lifestyle phone i would put the oppo f5 right very 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 easy to understand why the oppo f5 is in there uh best geek phone is you can put in the razer razer phone i don't maybe i don't know if this is qualified or not for 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 this category but best geek phone as well for uh me a1 or the redmi note 4x I would put the uh, Infinix Note 4 Pro here because of the stylus, stylus, uh, nerd feature, right? So anything that has like super nerdy features, right? Razer phone has that 120 hertz display. The Mi A1 has stock Android. Nokia 8 could be a great nerd phone, a geek phone as well, right? I uh, we could call it geeky phone. That's <laughs> no, no, no. Let's call it best. Um, so, uh, yeah, Yung V7 Plus is the curry phone. We can put the V7 Plus in here too. Vivo V7 Plus, right? Uh, mid-range phone, we can put the, uh, Moto G5 S Plus. Right? So there you go. That's 15K. Perfect. Right? Uh, Huawei GR3 2017. 
Um, and then over in flagship, we can even put in the LG G6 or G6 Plus, right? That's been that's been available. Uh, obviously, Samsung S8 Plus, Note 8 Plus. I mean, well, that'll be on the list. Uh, it's going to be a tough year because it's, uh, oh yeah, OnePlus 5, yeah, 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 okay, OnePlus, OnePlus 5, and then 5T, that's, it's definitely in there. Also, that's also Geek Phone, the OnePlus phones. There you go, 5 or 5T. So, the Geek Phone is actually very, very interesting category. Best Geek Phone is very interesting category. Um, because of how we are as consumers versus other people as consumers um this is this is not necessarily the selfie but this is one that has like big big battery big specs or let's say uh geeky camera or something like that right so interesting to give that delineation between two smartphone categories there uh htc u11 huh interesting uh huawei mate 10 apparently uh jun ching wants it as a geek phone uh, Mate 10, there we go. Um, Zenfone 3 is other category. You can't put Zenfone 3 in this because Zenfone 3 is uh, a 2016 phone. You can't have that awards thing for 20... We already gave awards for Zenfone 3 from last year. Uh, Xiaomi Mi Note 3. <coughs> That's interesting. Uh, let's see. Pixel 2 XL. True. Pixel... To Excel. It's uh, slightly harder to find one. Uh, you have to import a pixel. Lifestyle phone, yes. iPhone X, yeah. Uh, Galaxy Note 8. Um, maybe, maybe even the Nova 2i or Huawei. Actually, the Huawei. P10, maybe not so much, but you know, what else is there? <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting my uh, throat is getting kind of scratchy here. I might need some uh, some cold medicine soon. Uh, best budget smartphone. I could include. Uh, what could we include here? I've I've had some ideas actually. Uh, oh yeah, I'll, I'll include the Infinix. Note 4, but only if uh, only at discounted price only. Because nobody would buy this at 11k. This used to be 11k for Christ's sake. But now it's like 7k, 6k. And honestly, it should be considered at 6k. Nobody should ever consider this. Kulang ako pro sa Huawei. So, pro Huawei. Which one has a pro? Uh... Mate 10 Pro. Okay. Um, Pixel 2. We already have the 2 XL. We could have. No, let's do Pixel 2, 2 XL. Um, we can also include that in the smart uh, smartphone of the year or flagship smartphone. Uh, Pixel 2 XL. Um, well, I must suggest no Sony. Sadly, not so much, huh? Uh, it's since. Sony has been a little. I would. I could put it in the uh, in the uh, the running here. I think the the Sony Xperia Z XZ Premium is is nice, and the pricing on the XZ Premium is getting lower and lower. I think so. Let's see if we can if we can find a pricing uh, Sony Xperia XZ Premium price drop. I think it price dropped recently. Uh, let's see. Price cut makes it more convincing. August 2017. So still have so six seven hundred dollars. I thought it was uh, in the Philippines. I thought the dr price dropped, but maybe not. <coughs> Sorry. There you go. Scratchy. Na na uh, the uh, the throat is getting worse. Let's see if we can get an Xperia here. Xperia... Wow, there's still Xperia Z here. What? That can't be right. No XZ Premium. There's XZ over here. Oh, there you go. What? 45k? That can't be right. 
20k for the regular XZ though. That's pretty affordable. Um, Savers Electronic World. So this is an official store in the Philippines. 40, 45, 5. This must be the original SRP. This is international probably. Can we try Argo Mall? So this is Argo Mall. Uh, it's a nice other place for buying uh, phones, by the way. So let's look for... What are we looking for here? Sony. Uh, Android. So do you have an advanced search here if you want to want to dig into this stuff? Does it have Sony? Sony, yes. Okay. Let's see. Uh, search. There we go. So Xperia X. Sometimes they're, they have older older units though. XZ Platinum. Wait, what? XZ. What is? Oh, that's a color. XZ XZ. Oh, they don't have the premium. Look at them TVs, though. I like them TVs. Oh, there you go. They have XZ Premium. Same price. So forty-five, four ninety. But in your pricing, you know, dito. That's a little pricey, huh? I mean, it is a four K display. 4K HDR display. I'm very happy. I'm very kind of impressed with, with that. But still, it's uh, pricey. Uh, Zenfone Ma 4 Max. Okay. Zenfone 4 Max, 5.5 inch, in the budget category. Um, Cherry Flare S6. I don't. <laughs> Is it is it part of the cherry though? Something. <laughs> Xperia XA One Plus. What? Sign your XA One Plus. Sign, wh what category? Um, see, the thing is, some of these, some of the names, some of the phones, we don't put in there because we don't think it's gonna win. But we can definitely put as many names of phones in there. I just don't have an idea if this is, for example, this one. This is a Helio P20, and I don't think any Helio P20 is going to win for 17,000 pesos. But we're going to put it in there. Uh, Xperia uh, XA1. What is that? XA1 Plus. Just fucking... Who the fuck fought? What? Xperia XA1 Plus? What? What, what the fuck? F fucking foot? Who the fuck fucks and fuck? God damn, who the fuck thinks of this name, man? God. So many plus fucking... Because, just because iPhone did the plus shit. Everybody's doing plus now. Look at Samsung. When did they start using plus? When the I, when iPhone came... When, Cloud Phone Excite Prime 2 Pro. Uh, is that budget? Because I know Cloud Phone... Cloud Phone... Excite Prime 2, I think, is budget. But I don't know uh, if the Pro version is in... Uh, what price the Pro version ends up in. Um, so what else are we talking about here? So, anybody has a, any more, like, high... Like, any have any Anybody have, like, better, you know, phones that have high chances of winning in their categories here for for example best budget smartphone what what phone do you think has a has a high chance of, i think i think the biggest contenders here would be the zenfone 4 max and the redmi note 4x particularly i don't necessarily like the zenfone 4 max but in this price point there's not a lot of stuff that you can consider these days like i could i could necessarily vote for these two redmi note 4x and the note 4 infinix if only because the Infinix Note 4 has been discounted. Um, but we'll... we'll <sighs> May Meizu ba na maganda? The Meizu 7 Pro? I think it's a mid-range, the Meizu. I forgot the name. Uh, let's see, Meizu... 
Thank you for the subscribe. I can't read your name though. Uh, I think it's a Russian name. Thank you for the subscribe. That's for sure. Mezu Pro Seven Plus. Jesus, there's a plus. God damn it, there's a plus. <clears throat> so this is a Hellotronics product. 18k for the Mezu Pro Seven. I'll put it in. I'll put it in there. Thank you for the subscribe, Liam Bo. Sit down, Liam Bo. Sit down. Thank you for the subscribe. Uh, yeah. So I don't know about the Dell pricing. Um. All right, let's. Uh, what else can we do? Landslide win Redmi Note Four X. <laughs> I know it's gonna be tough. It's going to be tough to, like, it's going to be a quick discussion for no, maybe number one. Espe even in the mid-range side. And then it's going to be like, oh, Doogee and Blue Boo. Oh, yeah, Doogee and Blue Boo. That's a good, yeah. So, now Doogee, Blue Boo, right? Um, I don't know if the Blue Boos are available yet, but I hope they are. They look very interesting. Uh, I think mid-range gonna be I think Oppo F5 has a good chance it's quite popular these days uh, Vivo does not have like any I can't I can vote in some of I can put them in but I wouldn't call them my choice for this here I, I it's worth considering by other V7 plus uh, by some of our other BTS hosts all right so me a1 Oppo F5 Moto G A5S Plus, uh, there's also the Moto G5 or whatever. Um, yeah, we have a bunch of choices here, but I think the Mi A1 has a very, very solid lead here. Uh, it's a very uh, it's a very tough second place. So here in the budget phone category, I think the second place is the most heated competition here. Second place is the most... Uh, we There's a strong first placer, and then they have a... Um, you know, there's a, there's some, there's going to be tough competition for, uh, second place. And then for mid-range smartphone, there's also a strong first place. And then there's going to be very tough competition for second place or in the best mid-range side. Now flagship, this is going to be interesting. I, uh, honestly, I don't, I have no idea what's going to happen here. Who are you going to argue for here? None of these phones, for example, Samsung or iPhone X or the Nokia. I mean, I could argue for the Nokia 8 if only because it's affordable. I could argue for the OnePlus 5 5T because it is... It makes other things not... I mean, you could put you, you can put the Asus Zenfone 4 in here and laugh at it because it's still not available in the Philippines, right? Um, and then that's as all well, smartphone of the year can be any brand any brand any price for any right so we can do redmi 4x no, Redmi note 4x here. We can do Xiaomi Mi a1 We can do anything here We can do note note 8 pixel 2 XL Right, so we can do anything here. That's crazy, right? So smartphone of the year is just all over the place could be to be completely honest um, so that's gonna be a very interesting discussion next week that's gonna be happening next week I don't know how we'll do it we'll figure it out but that's gonna be a, a thing and then there's always the lifestyle phone and the best geek phone but that's not all of it we have one more one more sort of juicy ju for, for the juiciness category only the juiciness right this is the variation or the uh the sort of uh the, the thing that we mix it up this year with uh it's called our uh x v v voice gadget of the year or basically x x x x is gadget of the year so all of our hosts all of our bts hosts will nominate one gadget they uh <coughs> one one choice gadget any or game whatever software thing that their favorite of the year Fav 
Fav whatever, favorite gadget. I, I'm just trying to... Uh, gadget of the year is perfectly fine. I'm just trying to explain it to you what these are. So basically, this is the special nominee or the... 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 <coughs> the... The... Um, the special thanks or the special nomination or the you know you know what I mean I forget the term eh? I forget the term like a special nominee for XXYY right so this time each of our hosts will nominate uh, will bring forth their own gadget of the year doesn't matter if it can it could be a refrigerator aircon laptop compute uh, mouse gaming keyboard uh, gaming laptop smartphone tv whatever what is one host for example i don't know yet my my gadget of the year um you know it could be your your choice could be host choice let's say b-boy b-boy's choice could be like b-boy's choice uh gadget uh favorite gadget ga gadget let's say maybe nintendo switch right for example so this is the honor honorary mentions right honor basically honorary right so <clears throat> this is what this is our minor uh category here um for just mentioning specific gadgets that not necessarily fall in the awards categories but is a is a standout gadget for the year for that specific host and that is a great way to just bring forth certain things on technology that is not necessarily part of the awards like for example what if my gadget of the year was this uh led clock fan because it is a really awesome led clock fan um so the, it brings forth certain small gadgets or certain small technological devices that would normally be ignored in a in a uh, in an awards format like this. So uh, I think we have I, be, I believe eight or so people or in in our core uh, BTS awards uh, list. We might have like six gadget of the year or, or uh, choice. Well, let's say, what's a great way to call it? I'm going to change the name. Um, Fave gadget 2017, right? Uh, so that's how I guess let's just call it the favorite gadget favorite gadget 2017 all right so that's that's gonna be uh, an honorary number for a small uh, any gadget in 2017 for any of our BTS hosts so th it just puts to light some some very interesting gadgets that don't necessarily win awards except for being our favorite gadget and I think it's a nice way to bring homage to certain tech things certain tech products that is not necessarily that do not necessarily get the uh the dimensions that they deserve so aircon <laughs> it doesn't matter i don't know i don't know i haven't figured out what my favorite gadget of 2017 is yet but that would be an interesting 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 topic i asked our hosts to describe or, or to give us an a, a little bit of a uh short reasoning on why uh, whatever is your favorite gadget of 2017 so that is interesting so there is our bts awards categories i think it's a very very nice list of awards categories this year i think it's it it goes beyond just the the best smartphone of a certain price point which was last year <clears throat> and it goes beyond just awarding smartphones as well <laughs> without going overboard like just like best keyboard of the year best mouse of the year best graphics card of we don't do that right so we're gonna do our core lab uh, course core smartphone awards uh and then d delineate a little bit with the lifestyle phone and a geek phone so that there's a little bit more <clears throat> thought behind how how one how this phone won how would this phone won as well and then there's favorite gadget of 2017 which is kind of our wild card so it makes our show a little bit more interesting to talk about here uh, and i do like where we're going with that so <coughs> ryzen part ryzen prox pronounce a budget in the quick upsy intel but 
You know, that's right. You know, Ryzen is a very good uh, gadget. But we have to figure out if one of our hosts consider it to be the his favorite gadget of 2017. That's going to be some interesting things. Because I don't know what, for example, Jam will nominate for his gadget favorite gadget of 2017. If he does nominate one, uh, Sequoia Gian, Sequoia Migs, right? Sequoia Nico is still, uh, you know, we haven't heard from him in a while, but he's still around. He's uh, he's doing his own thing. Um, well, he's not. I mean, he's not separating or anything. He's uh, um, he's doing his content as well. He's uh, um, doing a lot of uh, arcades and stuff. Like that. So his interests are different. So he will have a very interesting favorite gadget of 2017, for example. So gonna be an interesting. Uh, category there. I'm looking forward to seeing who, what, what kind of gadgets show up on that um, Fave Gadget 2017 category. So anyway, that is it for our uh, BTS Awards. It in uh, BTS Awards uh, details, right? So uh, it, it's supposedly a nomination night, kind of, but not really because we don't really do. I mean, we do, don't really need to do a lot of nomination night so much. We just need to do the uh, the deliberation. We can do the nominations outside of the um, outside of the actual show right now. So that's what we're gonna do for now. Uh, the Koha Community's Choice Award. Like I said, you're gonna vote for it. You can win a uh, HyperX Cloud Stinger and other other stuff that we're will will still to be decided. What other prices I'm gonna give away? We're gonna have some USB LED fans to be given away as well. Uh, we're going to deliberate on which budget smartphone is going to win the next week. Best mid-range smartphone, best flagship, smartphone of the year, best lifestyle phone, best geek phone, call of the year, which is kind of a fail of the year. And our favorite gadgets of 2017, which is a very interesting. I would like to see what other favorite gadgets other our other hosts have. So anyway, having a little bit of a hard time uh, breathing again because of all the uh, a little bit of a cold coming in if I can you know I think there's a little bit of uh, throat itchiness and then a little bit of the nose getting a little bit <laughs> that's not a good way to end the show um, anyway that is our BTS awards categories this 2017 I hope you like it I hope you like the the new format for the Kohawk community's choice Hope you like the new format for all of the other uh, gadget awards. And uh, yeah, we don't have a lot of th things to talk about anymore. So I think we should end the show after that. I hope you guys um, are looking forward to BTS Awards. Uh, we'll be discussing all of the things next week. And uh, you know, you might win a USB LED fan. <laughs> so before Lumala yung aking cold, I want to wish you guys... A great evening, a great morning today. Today is now uh, Sunday, December 10, 2017. That has been the big time show for December 9, 2017. Uh, I thank you very much for watching. That's it for the show. Uh, if you have any more comments, uh, let me know. Just type it in the comment box. But uh, for, that, for now, uh, I very much thank you for watching. And uh, hope you participate in our Kohawk Community's Choice. It's a very nice uh, award thingamajig thing. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I don't want to say again. I don't want to say anything else. Very, uh, very just end topic. Take care, mate. Uh, oh. I think my friend is calling me on Facebook. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. That's it for now. Bye-bye. See you next week. Woo! Yay!